some of them. You're wasting all your time and money on models. Paint what you have. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Model Club TV Episode 9. Nine episodes. Who would have thought? We're still here. Uh, this one, Scott. This is a good episode. Not that the others weren't good, but this is a special episode. This is a special episode. Um, we have our interview with Mark Worthling from Pestilence Labs. Did uh, He's resurrected the Aurora box art kits, and he's given us exclusive first views of that. So you'll get them here. And um, our special guest, uh, Jeff Yeager. And because we're so close to Halloween, who better to talk about classic monsters in the garage kid hobby than Jeff Yeager? Yeah, it was a great interview. And that kind of brings us to the beginning of this episode. Ooh, it's a long one. So we're going to skip all of our stuff for this episode and go straight into the interview with Jeff Yeager and Mark Worthling. Uh, there's a lot to cover. We, we got through a lot of stuff. It would be great to have them back at some point, but we'll talk about that after the interview and we hope you enjoy it. Yeah. All right. We'll fast forward through our usual bits. Okay, let's go. Done. Hey everybody, we're welcome back. We are here with Mark Worthling of Pestilence Labs and the amazing sculptor Jeff Yeager. Thank you both so much for joining us today. It is truly an honor. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, we wanted to go into some of you know we this is Halloween season coming up. We're gonna do a classic monsters conversation later on after we go over some of the stuff that pestilence labs has been doing with jeff and some of the other stuff you guys have been cranking out here some amazing work so i want to do a quick history of pestilence and you mark and how you got to work with jeff and you know we'll just go through it and see where we end up um uh, scott you ready i'm ready you, let's you're, go you ready to go okay yeah i'm awake he's, been, he's been so excited for this he's called me every night this week where i'm like oh my god leave me alone but Jason gave me shit earlier because he says, Oh, you cleaned up. He did. If you go back <laughs> and look papers this high, dude, if and you I go, go, well, yeah, Jeff's coming on. I told him I shaved my legs yeah. too. And yeah. he got a haircut. Yeah. You know, it's losing. I was going to say something there. Scott. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I yeah. appreciate the leg shaving. I really, yeah. hey. no problem. You know, you know, for you, Jeff, nothing, nothing shows respect. <laughs> That's right. Like, like a, a, like a good <laughs> leg <laughs> shaving and a, and a like, back waxing. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Oh, I need to do that. Nice, smooth baby legs. There you go. His wife appreciates the leg shaving too, I think. So. She don't care. Oh, that's she true. I think you're past that. Mark, how did you get started? Where did you, like, what was the first thing? When when you decided to do Pestilence Labs, how did that even happen? Well, um, so I've been in the hobby for quite a while. Um, you know, probably uh, my the first, you know, I've been building model kits since I was like six or seven, like all of us, you know. Um, somehow or another, I totally missed the Aurora thing. I, I totally missed it. I mean, just my age, I guess. I was born in <laughs> 1967. I completely missed. I, I don't remember ever seeing an Aurora kit on a shelf. I don't know why, but uh, uh, but I, you know, built airplanes, tanks, you know, all that stuff, uh, chips, you know, the, the that kind of stuff, and uh, you know, did that through uh, you know school and you know graduated and then you, you know, find out about girls and all that kind of stuff and um ended up uh getting married you know going to college getting married and uh amazingly right after you get married you get back into hobbies <laughs> um, so uh so i got, got back into escape. it a little bit um <clears throat> uh, dabbled in uh, military miniatures like really i mean there's a whole world of really high-end military miniatures uh Little figures like this guy. I thought I'd bring him in. I actually started painting with oils. This is a a Lanchnik drummer uh, painted with oils. Um, so wow. I was big into the like seventy five millimeter right figures. That's great. <clears throat> and then I found this uh, magazine. You know, uh, I saw it advertised. I forget where, but Amazing Figure Modeler. And I bought issue zero I somehow i sent away you know and mailed away a, a you know an envelope with a i don't know five bucks in it or something the days before issue the internet number, issue number zero which uh i wish i thought about it i would have grabbed it and brought it in here uh but that was actually the first issue of afm was issue zero and it was very small and i guess they were testing the waters and uh they ended up of course doing it and i, I i've been subscribing ever since 
and it was a whole other world of of modeling, right? Of, of, of really incredible stuff. All the stuff we watch in the movies and um, blew my mind. And um, I started the very first kit that I ever bought, a garage kit, was from Monsters in Motion. Um, and it was, uh, I think it was called The New Bride of Frankenstein or Sexy Bride of Frankenstein, something like that. And I, I got that kit and I was like, oh my God, this thing is huge and it's amazing. And it's made out of this material, this resin. And, uh, you know, started, started collecting more stuff. And uh, I've been collecting like crazy for since like 1993. So I've got a pretty sizable collection. And like Scott and I have talked, I'm one of those guys that once I start collecting a series of something, I got to have all of them. <laughs> I, I can't not have an installment. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> so I have, I have a large collection. I've got, for example, you know, seller cast. Uh, that was another company that just blew my mind. I mean, I've got all of the Boris Vallejo kits. I've, uh, those are some really nice kits. They did some including, great work. Yeah. Uh, the very difficult to find tattoo. That's a pretty hard one to find. Um, so I've got, I've got all those. I've got like Jeff, I've got, you know, the quarter scale, uh, stuff that you did for uh kit kong i've got every single one of those um i've got all of mark brokaw's big heads every one of them i've got all of the uh tribute busts that blackheart has re released i mean it's just so I, I get i start collecting a series and i gotta have them all how many um, of those big heads have you built and painted <clears throat> scott <laughs> are you in the, the same boat as scott <laughs> I am ashamed to say two. Don't be ashamed. Hey, no, you're probably two. better than Scott on that. Uh, but I plan to paint them. Uh, so that that's a good, that's kind of a good dovetail into, yeah. uh, you know, why am I not painting a lot of stuff? Because I'm doing this right. crazy uh, Pestilence Labs thing. Um, another thing that helped inspire me in this, you know, so another uh, Dawn Hobby was uh, advertised in AFM. I was like, wow, these guys are in Deland. That's like an hour and a half away. So, so I, I, I had a brand new baby daughter, my oldest daughter. Uh, she was one year, you know, less than a year old. I don't know, a couple months old. Piled her into the car and took, drove her an hour and a half up to Frank wins for, uh, you know, his doll and hobby shop. And, and we went her around in the, in the store and buying, uh, you know, Bernie Wrights and Frankenstein and all these other things. Um, I would so have, I've cool. never, I, like, I ordered so much stuff from Doll and Hobby way back when to actually oh, yeah. be able to go into that place would have been amazing. Like, I've never, yeah. like, oh, it was pretty cool. And Frank has become probably one of my best friends. Um, you know, his family were all very good, close friends. <clears throat> so it's been a nice uh, 20 plus year, you know, friendship. I chanced upon an ad uh, for uh, going to Pestilence Labs now. I chanced upon an ad on, I think, the clubhouse or somebody was advertising this Hellboy bust. And uh, they had the original sculpt by Joe Simon, and they had the original molds, and were, were, they were selling it and selling the rights to produce it. And, and I thought, man, I remember seeing that at Wonderfest. I, 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 I wanted that, and you know, here it is, and I can get it for whatever, whatever it was. I don't know. Um, a dollar. Yeah. Everything's a dollar. Because yeah. when the wife I asks, what does that cost? It's a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> so I got this thing and I said, now what the hell am I going to do? I mean, I didn't have a clue. I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, I bought this. Uh, so Frank, you mm -hmm. know, again, I, this good relationship with Frank at Mobius and, and Frank's Frank can, Frank can make molds. And he's, he's, you know, he did all that when he, when he owned Mobius, you know, all the sculpts that Jeff sent or whoever, he, the first castings were Frank's molds and, so I went to his shop and we made molds of Hellboy and, and uh, I, uh, I had Jimmy Flintstone cast, cast them for me and I sold, sold those Hellboy busts and they did really well. And, uh, and then I, I, uh, Shaky Dave, I'm sure you guys know Shaky Dave. Uh, yeah, we are familiar at, with that guy. Wonderfest, he, he, he had, he happened to have the Cronin bust that goes with that Hellboy bust. And he said, yeah, you know, they, they, these belong under the same roof, man. You, you want it? I'll sell it to you. You know, I'll give you a good deal. So I bought that. And uh, so then I, I found out, you know, that Joe had sold uh, Abe Sapien. He never sold the sculpt to anybody. So I reached out to Joe and, and we came to an agreement and he said, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. So 
So now I've got all three of those and uh, started selling those. And I went to Wonderfest and got a vendor table and, and it worked out pretty good. So, so then I thought, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to try to, you know, there's subjects that I really like that I, I would love to do. And uh, I forget how I got a hold of you, Jeff. I don't, I don't know. I somehow, uh, it was by you know, phone. I certainly didn't look you up in the phone book. Uh, it's a little thing called a telephone. Yeah. You dialed, I answered it was, <laughs> so I was I, amazed I, that day. So what I, is this I, box that's ringing? Yeah. <laughs> so I called Jeff. Um, I don't even remember that first uh, discussion, but I, I, I wanted to do uh, Van Helsing. And, you know, I, mm -hmm. I always loved the, uh, the Zotz kit. I don't remember right. the Zotz. I yep. uh, had uh, the, the Van Helsing with the three, with the, with the bride's heads. Eli, right? His name was? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yes. And uh, so Jeff and I talked about that and, uh, it was pretty elaborate. I mean, three, three heads and, you know, the Van Helsing and a pretty good sized base. And, um, so we, we did that and it was fantastic. Um, I think I tried, didn't I try to talk you out of it at one point? Oh yeah. I that's think something I, <laughs> I think because so. you um, wanted, what you wanted was very elaborate. You wanted with the big base and the multiple character heads. And I said, are you sure you want to do this? I mean, you know, and, and, uh, but you had a clear vision. I said, okay, sounds good to me. And, yeah. And, and again, mm -hmm. the only way I could do this pestilence lab thing, because again, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Um, so I, I tried to surround myself with people that were experienced and really good at this. I mean, Jeff, of course, I mean, you know, and Jeff is very experienced as we'll get to absolutely. here. In a minute. Um, so I, I, <laughs> called upon Mike, Mike Evans, uh, who started, uh, mm -hmm. well, he had Alchemy Works, uh, or, uh, if you recall, is that yeah. Alchemy, yep. Scott? I Alchemy think so. Works? Alchemy, yes. yeah, he was yeah. Lunar Models years ago, and then he was yeah. Alchemy Works, yeah. And so Jeff sent him the sculpt, and uh, Mike uh, did the molds for me, did the casting, and um, it, uh, you know, I still got the master back in the room here, in the, uh, the storage room. Um, probably sold 45 or 50 of them, so it did pretty good. So and, uh, hold on one second. When he contacted you to do that, was that something you would be excited to do normally, Jeff? Or is it like, oh man, here's another, uh, you know, Dracula from Bram Stoker's movie, or is it something uh, actually, you hadn't done before? I don't think I'd tackled any of those those characters from that film, and so I kind of was excited about it. Certainly, cool. the challenge of doing Anthony Hopkins um, <clears throat> was something I was also I'd never done. I mean, you know, I I don't really. I can't think of a, a sculpt when somebody said, can you do this? And I went, no, nah, well, I don't really, because I, I really kind of like everything. I mean, I, I, uh, my work ranges all over the place. So, but what I liked about what Mark's ideas is that they were different. Um, you know, I'd never seen something with somebody carrying three heads and the other one that you did about the free floating Dracula. Um, and right. I thought those were very clever ideas. And, and so I kind of actually liked the challenge. I was just worried that, that, you know, those, those kinds of bigger kits tend to be expensive. And so I was worried about, um, you recouping your money because a lot of people will start off like the, I don't know if you can see it, but up here at the top, where, where is that? See that Frankenstein up there with the, Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, that, um, I, I try to talk that, that guy out of doing it. Um, because I said, this is just going to be a, such a hugely expensive kit. It's going to be expensive to make expensive to ship. And uh, he ended up, uh, I think, selling enough just to get his money back and get out of it. But it wasn't a big money maker because of everything that was involved. And so um, sometimes I'll try to caution people. But, you know, if they're willing to go forward, so am I, because I really like the work. I mean, I really like the, the innovation of those ideas that you had. So never someone has said, hey, can you do this? And you're like, eh, never. <laughs> I, well, you don't have to give anything first, away, no. but <laughs> no, listen, not at first. I've had some things where I get halfway through and I go, Oh, I don't want to do this anymore because it proves more complicated than yeah. I thought. Or, um, I I'm having trouble with the likeness, which I didn't anticipate. Um, a lot of, mostly there, there are people who ask me, collectors who ask me to build these puppets and I won't take any more of your time. Mark. It's just, they, oh, they no, ask no. me to build animation dolls. And uh, some are made with uh, foam latex and some are made of silicone. And, and they're very complex because they have to have a, a skeleton made of uh, aluminum and it all has to be articulated and everything. And I have to build the piece over it. And sometimes it gets to be so complex that I can hardly wait for it to be over because it takes so much time. Gotcha. <clears throat> totally. And, gotcha. and it tend to be cartoony and, you know, 
uh, from silly shows. And so it's not like I'm thinking, there's no cool factor. I mean, it's, it's just a technical thing. But sorry, Mark, go ahead. Oh, no, oh, there's no, yeah. sorry. This is a mix of <laughs> and things. back to you. Do. We're good. Well, I want a quick note too, uh, that Frankenstein, that was 20, 21 or 22 pounds that box was. Yeah. When it yeah, got it's to me. It's so, a, because I own it, it's, it's huge. Yeah. Once you put it together, it's kind of a nice thing. I mean, it takes it's a nice coffee table, right? <laughs> yeah, right. It actually can be used as a coffee table. Yeah. You can actually put things on it. Right. You or just take met- out and put a TV in there. So, okay, back to Mark. <laughs> no, you're so good. Scott, so Scott, it's interesting. You have one of those. By the way, I have one of those. Uh-oh. Yeah. We're going to have dueling yeah. collections. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, um, you just mentioned the floating, was that the floating Vlad? That was your next thing you guys did together? Yes. So yep. I think a lot of people like the uh, the Bram Stoker. Uh, you know, I had several people saying, gee, you should just expand this line and just keep going. And um, so um, so I thought, you know, there weren't really a lot of decent kits of, of, of uh, uh, Gary Oldman's Vlad. I mean, there just weren't. Yeah. Um, there's a few out there now. Um, I've seen some good ones now. Yeah. Yeah. There's some out there, but, uh, I, you know, this was, uh, and I got to give some credit to, uh, where credit's due. Um, actually, uh, Paul Gill and I were, were talking, uh, one night and he, he said, man, you know, it would be really cool. Have him floating through the air, br- bursting through the window. I'm like, <laughs> wow, that'd be cool. You know, and you know, it's like Jeff said, you know, these ideas are great. And it's like, I called Jeff. I'm like, yeah, I want him floating. You know, Jeff's like, <laughs> floating. You want him floating? What? <laughs> How the hell is he floating? Um, but it's anti gravity kind of resin. Yeah. Yeah. But Jeff <laughs> came well, off the great show. Sideshow started really exploring doing um, things flying and being in midair and like two characters, you know, that attached by a fingernail and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all this really yeah. ambitious stuff. So I was kind of starting to get used to those ideas. So and, and excited by them because they really look dynamic on your shelves as opposed to your 98 Frankenstein. But, there you go. You know, I mean, yeah. there's not much you can do with it. But <clears throat> so, yeah, no, I was I, I, kind of, I thought those were great ideas. I really did. Yeah, it, it's <clears throat> definitely cool. Um, it's one of my favorites. Um, it's huge. Uh, Jeff, I, I, I got to think it's it's got to be closer to one fifth scale. I mean, I don't know. It's gigantic. It really is big. Well, I think I think the illusion that it's so you know, so large is created by those robes. Yeah, because they, mean, they hang past his feet, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and they had to be extended down in order to give the illusion of floating so they yeah. just go on forever it's like a boa constrictor you know yeah <clears throat> it is nice um so, so so then just continuing on through the kind of the history of uh pestilence labs so the so the lab was a, a huge so that was my first introduction to mark brokaw so again you know surround yourself with people that are excellent at what they do, you know, the highest level of quality, you know, just for those people that don't know, Mark, like for someone watching this, who has no idea, explain what's the best word to sum up, Mark perfectionist <laughs> psycho. Engine- like what, like what is perfectionist Mark I mean, the man will engineer right. even the simplest of things. Just pick a word. Right. Word. <laughs> <laughs> word. Yeah. I, I have the highest respect for that. Man. Yeah, that guy, man. Uh, <clears throat> number one, uh, in addition to surrounding yourself with with people that are just utmost professionals, um, what I like is I've I've tried to surround myself with people that are just good people. I mean, Scott, get out of here. Get out. Mark, yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Yeah, I gotta go. See you. <laughs> Mark Brokaw is like uh, just a great guy. Um, he is. He really is. I, yeah, and on top of that. He is just so good at what he does. But anyways, uh, so that's how I met Mark. And um, uh, to add a little creepy factor, you know, I, uh, so I, he and I started working together and uh, I, one, uh, I kind of worked for, uh, at the time I worked for an airline and uh, I could, I could do, I could fly, you know, for very low cost. And uh, I said, Hey, uh, how about I come out some weekend and just kind of hang out and uh, <laughs> learn, learn what you do, you know, show me what you do. And he's, he said, sure, absolutely. Come on out. So, um, so I've actually been out to his place a couple of times and he's uh, kind of showed me the ropes, taught me how to properly, I'm, I'm going to say properly, 
I'm sure a lot of people will be throwing rocks at the screens. But I mean, where, where did you have stay? A... Did did you bring a tent and a sleeping bag? Where did you stay? Uh, I did. I did bring a sleeping bag, but he. Uh, but I, I just, you know, slept on the floor or whatever. I mean, you know, uh, he's... no, he was actually he's accommodating, a... isn't he? We yeah. had a yeah. crawl space under the sink, Mark. Go yeah. on, man. it's all yours. Uh, I yep. stayed out in the shop with the resin. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, he had a guest room, and uh, he's a very <clears throat> super guy. Um, did you shoot anything while you were out there? Uh, because he likes yeah. to shoot that pellet gun. He takes all his rejects <laughs> and he sets them up and he shoots them in his backyard with his pellet gun. Well, he fills them with pressurized air. Oh yeah, so that when he shoots them, they explode. No <laughs> kidding. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Um. So uh, the authorities are until someone way. loses an eye. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And with pressurized air. <laughs> yeah, shot your eye out, kid. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so Mark uh, kind of showed me the ropes on casting, how to how to cast. He has a very specific system and process, and uh, I follow that uh, when I cast. Uh, so uh, looking forward to learning more from him. Um, but uh, so after we finished that uh, Bram Stoker project, then I, I, Jeff, I was sitting in a parking lot at a Seven Eleven. And I, I, I was sitting there. As one does. You know, yeah, as one does. You're selling drugs you know, to kids? What do you, what do, you do? do? I mean, you know, it's, it's that old joke, you know, your, yeah. your, your loved one or your wife is like, do you love me? And then, you know, what, what am I thinking about? How come Monsters of Motion never did a creature box art tribute? <laughs> you know, and um, I'm sitting there and I, I thought, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to call Jeff and, and <clears throat> see if he can explain this to me. And uh, so I, I called Jeff and uh, I said, Hey, I've, you know, another series that I've collected. I have all these box art tribute kits, but they stopped. I said, there's like five or six that they haven't done. And the creature, I mean, why wouldn't somebody do the creature? I was going to finish those, but I forgot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, I mean, uh, it's Jeff's line, right? Um, it's, it's, uh, and, and, mm -hmm. and Monsters of Motion, uh, I guess they decided to, to work on other projects and, um, you know, Jeff said, Hey, we can do it if you'd like, you know, just, uh, let me know. Let's, uh, let's do it. You know, just send, send me a deposit and we'll, we'll get started. So, uh, so the creature was the first one. Why'd and, you pick the creature to go first? Well, I'm a creature nut. I, uh, again, collector, I probably have, you know, there's a lot of creature model kits in the garage kit hobby. I, I probably have 90% of them. I've got a lot. I mean, the, the ones that I don't have are like Splish Splash. I think that was Exo Facto. Um, you know, a couple of really high end creatures, you know, that maybe, um, uh, you know, the uh, big quarter scale uh, Laguna by Mark Alfrey. I've been trying to find that one for a long time. So, anyways, Did you I get the Sideshow one, the, the, uh, the swimming creature from Sideshow. Yes, I do have that. Yep, <clears throat> I have that. Um, oh, and I do have a, I have a full size uh, Mark Alfred creature in the family room. Um, nice. I'll, oh wow. Yeah, I'll keep I'll, the I'll burglars, burglars away. What's yeah. that? Keep the burglars away. That's yes, yes. <laughs> Um, so the guys that caught you sitting in the parking lot of the Seven <laughs> Eleven, yes, <laughs> wouldn't find anything funny in your house were they to yeah. get right. a warrant. <laughs> so, so the creature is my favorite all time universal thing. So, um, so Jeff, <clears throat> uh, so we started that project and, um, uh, when, when the sculpt was done, I posted initial pics. Uh, I remember that day, like yesterday it was July 4th. I was sitting in a McDonald's and, uh, <laughs> posted that and my phone just started going off. Just ding, 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 ding. You know, put me on the list, put me on the list, put me on the list, put me on the list. And um, you know, the funny thing about it is when I first when I first came up with that line, and I'll tell you the story about it, that later, but um, I, I couldn't get anybody to, to bite. I took huh. it to Tucky. He was not interested. I took it to several other people. Finally, Terry, Terry Fitt was like, oh, good, but they're showing. Why do you think that is? Why do you think no one cared? Um, like just because it wasn't. I think it, it just wasn't in the mainstream. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't from a movie and people were unsure and it's a new thing and I don't know. And 
So nobody, I mean, it was a big investment because, you know, you're, you're going to do an entire line. You're going to do 13 of them, not just one. And, uh, you know, Terry said, well, we'll see how the first one goes. And it just did really well. I mean, everybody who I had taken it to from time to time would go, uh, uh, you know, can I do one? Can I do one? And these are all the guys that pass. And I said, no, you cannot. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, have you ever, has, has anyone from but Monsters in Motion said, hey, why are you doing this? We want to do this again. Um, have you, you caught know, any? I, again, I'm, I'm not the kind of guy that likes to... Uh, make waves or, or create any kind of problems. Oh, I there we to, are. Okay, I'm back now. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I actually contacted right. I contacted Terry uh, at, at Monsters of Motion and uh, let him know that I was, you know, doing the project. And um, I think he was I think he was disappointed, but a little bit. And uh, but I, I told him I said, look, I, you know, this is this is the best of uh, both worlds for you. I said, I'll mm -hmm. I'll produce this. You don't have to invest all the capital. I'll sell it to you, uh, you know, at a discount, obviously, so that he can make some money. And so he, in all fairness, you know, he hadn't ordered one in 10 years. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. there is a statute of limitations where yeah. if somebody loses interest or they just don't stop doing it, I mean, the line wasn't his. I, I was the one who was selling it. So right. uh, when you called me, I just thought, you know what? He, he isn't, I haven't heard from him in 10 years. So I'm going to, I'm going to go for it with you. Because I, yeah. I wanted to fish them too. Yeah, cool. So, so Terry actually was. Uh, I mean, he's he he bought quite a few. He sold a lot of creature kits um, on on his site, and I make it very easy for him. I I do order fulfillment. I ship them directly to his customers, and he never. Has you do to a very them. good job, by the way. Your packages are very very nice. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Uh -oh. I never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm staying out of this. You'll have to edit out. that out. Yeah, I know. No, it's staying. <laughs> Is my tongue bleeding? <laughs> so um, then, uh, so then I asked Jeff. I uh -huh. said, "What do you want to do next?" And uh, I said, "Let's keep this going." I said, "You know, what are you excited about? What do you want to do?" And and Jeff, I think the Hunchback was what you wanted to do next. Yeah. And so we so we did that, and that was very elaborate. I mean, when I first, when I got that Jeff, I was my first thought was, "Oh my God, this this is going to be really expensive to make." And, yeah. um, and, and it, it was. was. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, that big castle in the background. It's it's a beautiful piece. Um, you know, the uh, pictures that that we have here um, were painted by Saul Alvarez, uh, another great guy. Uh, Love Saul. Um, He's great. Yeah. Um, so he he painted that one and, and did a beautiful job. And, uh, and then the next one was kind of a surprise was because, you know, uh, Monsters, Monsters of Motion did a Wolfman kit, the original box art Wolfman. But Jeff said, hey, you know, the Frightening Lightning box art is awesome. And, and, and that hasn't been done. So, so that's actually sitting right here. I don't know how, how it looks with the lighting. But um, that has been, uh, so that got turned upside down because of COVID. Um, you know, normally I I, uh, I have these kits produced by uh, you know by a factory because they're so popular. It's just a lot of kits. Yeah. Um. So the Wolfman, uh, I was un I was uneasy about sending it off to a factory, especially overseas. Um, and uh, so I basically done it myself with the help of uh, a few other folks. Mark Brokaw has a, an associate that uh, has been doing casting for me on this one. And I've I've cast about half of the of the kit, the base, all the grass parts, and the tree, and uh, the uh, Mark's associate basically cast all the body parts and the heads and all that stuff. Uh, the Wolfman himself, <clears throat> and uh, we've done all of that traditional garage kit style, just nice. you know, in the garage with pressure pots, and um, it's. Uh, that's a ton of work. You moved over. You moved over two hundred creatures, as, as, as I recall, yeah. two twenty-five, something like that. That's a yeah. monster wow. number. That's a, a, in fact, it's <clears throat> today. I was at the post office today, and I shipped a creature kit. I mean, it's the <laughs> still it's going. The first one, the first one I've uh, shipped in a while, but um, I think I've got about twenty-five or thirty left, and that'll be it. I'm probably not going to not going to do it. I, I might do some crazy experiment with Mark Brokaw. <clears throat> if he sees this, he'll probably be mad at me but uh <laughs> I, I want him to, to try to cast some glow uh a glow creature for me that would be really cool um 
Well, so at Jersey Fest, you had the um, just the torso of the hunchback with the alternate head. Yes. And we talked, and I said, you should make this a kit. And I suggested uh-huh. doing it on the platform, but smaller. And uh, any movement on that? Are we still thinking about that? Well, <laughs> um, as a matter of fact, I, uh, I had a conversation with Jeff. I, I said, hey, you know what might be cool is uh, to just – take the upper torsos of all these kits and, and offer them as like, uh, like busts with, with mm-hmm. arms. And, uh, wouldn't that be cool? And, and, and Jeff, uh, Jeff was like, eh. I said, Jeff, I don't know. Hey, you so that fits into your story. Has anybody ever said, and you went, I it does fit. So. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> I forget why I didn't, I didn't think that was, uh, well, I think it. I think it de- destroys the original purpose of the the whole portrait. I guess, or the whole. Yeah, story. the box art, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like the. I just like the idea of being able to switch the heads or showing it with both heads. You know, in that particular case of that kit was um, kind of cool. You know, I actually had the idea of, of, of doing a fantasy line of kits of of what if kits, um, like what if you know, Bella Lugosi had played the mummy. What if, uh, and, and oh. just switching them, you know, like have yeah. Boris Karloff cool. as Dracula, you know, and just switching actors and seeing like how that. they might look if they'd been in the makeups. So I thought that, that was would be, cool. That would be interesting. But again, no one will buy into it. And then I'll finally do it and people go, oh, why yeah, didn't 10 years later, someone this? else will come along. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you go to like, when you decide on which one you're going to do, do you just go, okay, I'm going straight at the box art or do you find a spot that. How do you, the process of deciding how to work a sculpture from a flat 3D, just, do you go on, I, I don't know, mm-hmm. well, going on the paint job, the lighting, the colors, how, walk I us actually, through the For the vomit kits, you're talking about if I go from, from just a single source of, of well, uh, specifically a, a just for the box art kits. Do you just, when uh, you look at that image, you're like, okay, it's gotta be this way. Just kind of walk us through how you go from the, the picture to your sculpture. Um, well, the first thing I do is I try to find the original photograph because he based a lot of his work on the photo. Okay. So if I can find the original photograph that he based some of his work on, then I get a better idea of what the, what the lighting was doing as opposed to what he was doing. Because, you know, uh, his stuff is close, but it's not spot on all the time. I can see Anthony, um, uh, the actor that played the hunchback, um, Quinn. Quinn. I can see Anthony Quinn's uh, visage in that painting but it's not dead on. Right. So I have to do what he did, did what Bama did. I can't. So I, so mm-hmm. I try to find Anthony Quinn and I start there and then I make my alterations to, you know, get what Bama got. And I also then try to establish the, the angle at which he's, uh, he's either uh, uh, decided on his own or he's taken from the photograph. And then when I'm trying to, when I'm sculpting, I try to hold the, the, the piece at that angle. Uh, and the reason I do that is because I have to make sure that I can get it dead on from at least one angle so that I can match it next to the, I can put the box next to it and get a dead on match. So when yeah. guys are painting, they can follow the, you know, paint by number of the instructions. Or That's kind of how I was it's wondering. It, like it's similar <laughs> to the, have you ever seen the, the chalk paint, the chalk drawings on the sidewalk that they only look perfect from one spot where they go 3d. Right. It looks like right. there's a hole in the sidewalk. Like you have to hold it right. That's why I was wondering if you kind of did it that way. Yeah. Well, and, and Bama, you know, always has a flaws in all of his <clears> paintings. There's a, there's a perspective flaw in almost all of them. And I have to deal with that. So um, the, 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 you know, the, you can see back here, the, the Phantom of the Opera, the way he's standing is impossible. It's, uh, there's something to do with, uh, uh, he can't have one leg higher, higher than the other or, or lower than the other. So I had to build a step into it. Gotcha. Because otherwise, mm. uh, it would have been an impossible. He would have le- been leaning this way, and like for example, the girl's legs I think go behind a tree that's actually then behind Kong, <laughs> which is impossible. Yeah. The 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 chain on the witch I don't know if you noticed like goes around her body and straight behind her, which but it looks like it's going straight down, but it can't go straight down. Gotcha. <laughs> because she's in the way, so it had right. you know I have to. There's always some yeah. sort of thing right. that he just, okay you know. <clears throat> so those are little things I have to figure out. So a- after you got a couple of these under your belt, Mark, you went on to some big head stuff, huh? Yeah. I, uh, 
I'm just a glutton for punishment or something. I, <laughs> I, 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 I really, lo- I've got the, like, I've got the bug. I mean, I, it's, it's really enjoyable working with somebody like Jeff or uh, Mark, Mark Van Tyne or Joe uh, Simon. And, uh, you know, just saying, you know, what, what would I want in my collection that nobody's ever done, you know, and, and then, you know, have them do it. And uh, like I said, I've collected all Mark's uh, big heads. And I thought those were like, uh, just at least at one point, they were the pinnacle of the hobby. I mean, they're just fantastic. The, the, uh, the, the, the size and the, um, you know, he was doing big heads before, you know, Blackheart was doing big heads or anybody. Oh, yeah. And uh, when you saw that uh, um, invasion of the saucer man for the first time, you're like, oh my God, that thing's incredible. You know, it's, it's, it's gigantic. And um, so I, I, you know, had already been working with Mark and I said, you know, I had this crazy idea and uh, this is where you need to listen to your wife when she gives you advice. <laughs> um, so I, I said, I said, the best movie in the world is War of the Gargantuas. I mean, <laughs> imagine War of the Gargant, you know, Gera and Sanda in a pivotal battle of big heads. It'd be incredible. And she's like, that movie's horrible. <laughs> Nobody's going to buy those. And uh, I've, got, I've got them in my collection, at least. Hey, um, <laughs> if it's something you like and you wanted it, you got it. Yeah. So I, uh, so, um, uh, so you're saying that didn't that didn't do well? It, I don't know how many sold. I, I'm I, if I Call were Shana, to, let's ask her how how it did. Who? Call Shana, the wife. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Call Shana, let's ask her how it did. <laughs> if uh, if if I were to guess, Jeff, I'd think maybe twenty twenty five each. Wow. Maybe. Wow. Yeah. Because it's so a I really had, good. It's a really good sculpt. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's uh, Randy Randy Lambert, by the way. And yeah, Randy is a very underrated. Mm-hmm. I, I don't say underrated. He's uh, underconfident, under, under the radar. Oh, he's just not. Uh, he's not thought of. You know, people don't realize that he's out there. Um, he does a, amazing work. Um, it's incredible. You know, he did all those midget monsters for uh, what company was that? Scott Dimensional Dimensional yeah. Design Dimensional Designs. Now he has his own line of midget monsters and they're, and they're really gorgeous. And uh, he did the gargantuas for me, including the little mini gargantuas, uh, which I then repurposed as an, uh, an individual kit in itself. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. And that's done pretty mm-hmm. well. Um, I've, I've probably sold about 40 of those. Um, and and I, I've, I cast all those myself as well. Um, so I, I, I then, uh, let's see. So we did the, the gargantuas. Um, uh, and then uh, when I was out at Mark's place, he was telling me how much he really wanted to do a, a Creature Walks Among Us big head. Um, so I, I said, well, let's let's do it. I'll I'll um, you know I'll help fund the project and we'll 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 work we'll do that one together. So uh, so we had Joe Simon do the Creature Walks Among Us, um, and that's in the current AFM. There's an ad uh, in there right now, uh, along with um, another Joe Simon sculpt that I. Uh, supported uh, for the big headline, which is the Swamp Thing, which is pretty cool. I mean, that's that's a, a character that hasn't been done a lot. I love that um, movie as a kid. I love. Yeah, it. yeah, it's awesome. And then the I'll I'm, I'm sure everybody wants to get to Jeff uh, and his monster stuff. You're doing uh, fine. You're doing <laughs> we're doing a good yeah. mix here, guys. <laughs> so, I had never. It's a soup of everyone is what we're doing. <laughs> So I told told Mark I said I said what would what would you want to do uh, in the big in the big headline what would be the next thing you want to do and he said well we there is no vampire in the big headline you know but he said you know there's already Dracula's out there there's already you know um, you know wolf wolf you know Wolfman and all that you know it's, you know what kind of vampire could we do and um, so I I told him you know you've got he's got teenage werewolf and he's got uh, I was a teenage Frankenstein. I said, well, you could complete the trifecta with, uh, it's called, the, the movie was called Blood of Dracula. It was actually going to be called, uh, it was going to be, I was a teenage vampire. But uh, they wanted to, I guess, ca- capitalize on the Dracula theme and, and they, it turned into the Blood of Dracula. And it's a, it's a girl that becomes a vampire. And it's a really cool character. I think her name is Nancy in the movie. Um, but we, 
so we were talking about that and then and then Barlow came up and uh, you know Barlow has not been done very much and so way back I say way back uh, November time frame I called Mark Van Tine and I said hey let's <laughs> it do does, you know what no you're right November feels like it was seven million years ago at this I know point. I know so Mark was really excited about mm-hmm. it um, he started working on it. Um, and, and the, the head's been completed. I think there's images of that. Um, I think you have one here you can show. And, uh, that is currently with Mark Brokaw right now. He's molding it. And then we're going to send, uh, Mark Van Tine out the casting and he's going to make the base, which is going to be very elaborate. It's going to have essentially a theme of the house, the man, the, um, um, Marston house. And the window, if you recall in the movie, that scene with the, the kid's window and the, the little vampire kid coming up and scratching on the window. Oh, yeah. So inside the base, it's going to be inside the base is going to be this kid scratching at the window from the and, and we can light it from inside the base. It's going to be super off, cool off the hook. It's going to be cool. Um, is that your favorite vampire movie? Let's real quick. Everybody's favorite vampire movie. Mark. I, I'd probably say Salem's Lot just because the impact it had on me as a kid. Okay, Jeff. Stars of Dracula. Scott. Uh, the original Dracula. Near Dark. So that's a good yeah. mix of... Okay. All right, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> so, right. Sorry. And just a, just a quick funny story, Scott, because I know you mentioned Anthony uh, Aran- Aranjo uh, in the last episode. Oh, that yes. Guy. Yeah, that guy. Put a again. picture of him in this particular spot. There's a new picture of him. Please put it in. I think I think I know the one you're talking about. I you got to see the hair. But, uh, okay. Anthony, you see the hair. I, I posted the I posted the Barlow pick, and Anthony made a comment on my post. He said, "Ooh, a vampire that sells antiques. Oh, so scary." And I was like, he's oh, the worst. He's he, sure. he hates everything. He hates everything. <laughs> he does. He does hate everything. He hate everything. Oh my god. Um, he's I a contrarian. Him. I love Stephen King. Yeah. I've read everything that guy's ever written or I'm, I'm on my way to, uh, you know, so the, the book is fantastic. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, Salem's I lot is just, just phenomenal. I just love that book. I've read it like three times. Oh, that's awesome. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so that's kind of where I, I forgive me for taking so long to get through that. Um, sure. but that's kind of how I've gotten to where I am today here in this crazy hobby. Um, just thankful to be working with people like Jeff and, um, you know, Mark Van Tyne and Mark Brokaw. So. <laughs> well, you did skip a few things or one thing, um, oh. that you do do a, uh, creature from revenge of the creature head to go in the oh, Mobius yeah. Frankenstein. Yes. Um, Frankenstein. Yeah. Cause in the Mobius Frankenstein. Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the, the revenge of the, so, um, so yeah, I reached out to Jeff and, um, you know, the Mobius creature kit is, is a great kit. <clears throat> um, again, hats off to, to uh, Frank Winsper. I mean, he, he did s- so much great stuff with that company. Um, and of course, me being a creature guy, I said, hey, hey, Jeff, would you would you be willing to do a, an alternate head for this creature kit? And um, it turned out fantastic. Um, and I, I think we have a picture of that. Um, and that that did exceptionally well. I mean, it's it's kind of funny how these projects, um, you know, Jeff, you're talking about like, uh, the Bram Stoker, uh, Van Helsing, you know, kind of a massive project. Uh, I mean, difficult to cast and produce expensive, you know, there's a return on the investment, right? So this little creature head at the time, I made more money with that little creature head than I did on anything else. <laughs> wow. Crazy. Wow. It's crazy. Um, that's amazing. And, you know, I'm just happy to produce something that people like. And, uh, right now I, I, you know, again, working hard to partner and, and be uh, partners, if you will, with people in the hobby. Um, Todd Powell sells a lot of alternate heads, you know, with his escape hatch hobbies. Um, so he asked if, if he could just carry that in his line and, uh, and just produce it 100%. So I said, sure. So sent him the sent him all the masters and molds I had and uh, he sells it now on his site. So it's available still and it probably will be forever. Uh, as long as well, well, everybody's time. friends and works together and, you know, yeah. tries to get it out there. We all have the same love. That's kind of great about this hobby. It really is great yeah. about the community. It is. Let me and, ask Jeff a quick question. <clears throat> um, sure. When someone sends you this, uh, Hey, I want to do a replacement <clears throat> head for the styrene kit. Cause I know you've done a few. 
Yeah. Um, is it a bigger pain in the ass than like just someone saying, Hey, do a creature head for me because now you've got to match that scale and you've got to fit it into that styrene kit. Um, um, it, it, to tell you the truth, it, it doesn't take a whole lot of uh, more time or effort to do that than it does anything else. Okay. Um, and of course, uh, I'm a big fan of those old, the, you know, the original Aurora models. And I started like everybody else did. So the, uh, the opportunity to help those along or give guys the opportunity to uh, scratch build stuff and, and you know, uh, kit bash those kind of things. That's kind of fun for me. So I, I don't mind those requests at all. Cool. Next time someone asks you to do a Frankenstein replacement head for that Mobius kit, tell me you want to do the whole body too. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Frank, that's before, for that. sorry, Frank, but it's like. That's before Frank and I actually got together because I was working for Monarch Models at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we were kind of competitors, but I wish he had come to me before that because uh, I think that was done in Japan. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, it it, it could have been better. Well, I heard he he was disappointed a little bit in it too. Um, well, a lot, of, a lot of times, maybe you know, Martin, we might kits, know better than, you know, on that one, but. But so. a lot of times, you know, you don't get back what you send. Oh, I mean, no, that's true too. You yep. know, cause they, they have to right. use a scribe and then they, transmogrify it into the computer and then they make alterations and for you know casting and then what what kicks out i mean when we were doing the batman series i couldn't believe what was coming out of there i mean i'd work my butt off to get warner brothers to to pass these things and then they'd come back and i'd go well now why did i even try you know if you just wanted a tiny potato i would just just give you a tiny <laughs> potato <laughs> a potato with a cow <laughs> well, exactly. and i want to say the mummy you did the mummy for them too right did you do the mummy for mobius uh, uh no, no sir I didn't. Oh, okay all right because hmm. oh. that didn't come back as good as the original sculpt you know it's a i like it but it didn't come back a lot of those styrene kits they don't um don't I mean, come back you know once they get engineered over there and well i tried to when i was working with for monarch i tried to um you you have to tear everything so if you do a, a kind of a, a vertical slice and you look at it from a you know uh, a, a profile you you everything has to be tiered so that there's no undercuts. So nostrils, ears, all those things have to be flattened out and and made to to go like a pyramid if you were to hold it up, you know, sideways. Gotcha. Um, so so that the oh, the man. metal molds, which aren't very forgiving, won't, won't catch on it. Well, when you're trying to do a likeness, that really hampers you a lot. So I worked really hard with the Mobius kits to try to you know do the tearing ahead of time. So at least I'd have some say about the final product. And we had and they actually did come out better. Uh, and Mobius, you know, the guys at Mobius said, oh, don't worry about that. That's not an issue anymore. So I just sculpted the way I wanted to. And of course it was an issue. <laughs> and something comes back in the nose is just like now this little nub because they had to, you know, shave stuff off of it in order to make it work for the machinery. And I just went, oh, yeah, okay, okay, whatever. Uh, I got paid. <laughs> I do love that Mobius offered the resin heads for the Bride of Frankenstein kit. Um, and not right. that they turned out bad. You know, I tell everybody for 50 bucks, that's a styrene kit. If that was a garage kit, do you know how much this thing would be? And you've got two figures on the couch and iconic mm -hmm. pose. So it was like, you know. And then they did a really good pre-paint later, which um, got sold when he sold uh, Mobius. They did a really nice uh, uh, two-figure pre-paint where they used the, the resin heads instead of the styrene heads. And it came out really well. It looked really pretty. <clears throat> Is now the time? Is this the well, time? Well, so as we segue witch? into this, the other yeah. replacement head that Mark Jeff sculpted, now I know Jeff sculpted this one, um, is a replacement for what to me is quite possibly the worst Aurora kit of all of them, which was the Salem Witch. <laughs> and and there have been replacement heads and nothing saves this kit. In my mind, nothing could save this kit. I mean, and the base was cool, but it's like the head is so bad. And... Um, Jeff and Mark got together and uh, I'll let Mark tell the story or whatever he decided to do it. But um, it makes me want to build a witch kit now because finally there's a replacement head that is just it fits on there. Beautiful. It, you know, it looks like it's supposed to look, it looks it's, like a witch. Yeah. It, yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. So why did you decide you want to do that, Mark? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I think we've got uh, some exciting stuff uh, as part of this part of this episode. We're going to show the latest uh, box art tribute, which is the witch. Yep. Um, so I think everybody will be uh, pretty floored when they see that. But I said to Jeff, I said, "Hey, 
while while we're doing this box art tribute kit, I said, would you mind just doing a little replacement head for the plastic kit? And, you know, I mean, I'm sure there are people that won't be able to afford the box art tribute kit that would like to have a decent head for the plastic kit. And uh, I don't know if I sent you guys that image, but Jeff did send me a picture uh, in the process where he had the two heads next to each other. It was kind of cool. Um, the, the box art tribute head, uh, which is, of course, uh, I don't know, Jeff. Are they one seventh scale? I, I, I guess that thing's small. I remember those things. I don't are know. It's, they're advertised as one seventh on all the Monsters in Motion pages, uh, which was no, no, the box I art kits one seventh like odd numbers. You well, know what? Well, that's 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 probably not true anymore. No, they're they're good one solid one sixth. Okay. So, no. Yeah. Um, um, I think the first ones I did were smaller because I actually wanted them to be the exact same size as the box art, but then. Uh, Obama started getting all over the map in terms of size. Yeah. And so uh, I, I just thought, well, I'm going to, I'm just going to make them straight one six scale because if I don't, there's going to be all these different sized kits, and it's just not going to, you know, because sometimes he'd be closer, you know, than he was for other paintings. Um, so I dropped that idea. But one six, I would say, yeah, they're not one seventh anymore. I might have that picture, Mark, mm -hmm. the two side by side. I think you sent it to me early on. Okay, I can always resend it. But if not, I'll have you resend it. We'll throw we'll so it'll be up here. Here it is. There you go. <laughs> hey. Cool. So do you want to get into it? Do you want this? Do you want to do it now? Is this it? I feel right, like we so need I feel like we, we need are, like okay, the old premiere. MTV world premiere video yeah. stuff. Our but drum roll. Drum roll. All right. I'm uh, <laughs> so uh, I guess drum roll and then uh, we're gonna put up a picture magically <laughs> magically happens. Um, so this key, uh, the the witch box art tribute kit, I'm gonna I'm gonna hand it over to Jeff is just amazing and jeffrey you want to tell us a little bit about what you did there i mean it's really uh very extensive B before jeff starts when i saw the pictures this morning when i started like going through everything i wow holy crap <laughs> like that thing's i want to swear i'm trying not to swear on this it's awesome it's really oh. really 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 awesome i have no um, idea what you're talking about yeah talk talk walk us through this kid <laughs> man it's so well i mean there was a reason why it wasn't one of the first ones I did. Thank you very much. Because <laughs> there are something like 45 pieces in this kit. Mm -hmm. It is just incredibly, uh, there's so much detail to it that I was just kind of avoiding it. I knew I couldn't avoid it forever, but uh, I, I just left it to last because holy smokes. <clears throat> and as, as daunting as I thought it would be, I mean, you can ask Mark, how long did it take me to deliver that kit? Months, wasn't it? I mean, COVID yeah. wasn't helping, but it took forever. You know, you can spend the day on the scissors, on the scissors, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're hanging on the wall. Oh, that bad. <laughs> Mark, as, as Jeff talks about this, the price for that's going up, you know. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, you know, the cages, we had to make that's cages it. with bars. And, and so we did them in two halves, kind of the way the, the styrene kit did it. But, you know, I mean, I had to make things that would fit on other things. And it was, you know, it's so cool. I, I, I actually started with the ground up and I built the kit as I went up so that everything would fit together. Because if I just start doing elements and you try to put them together, forget about it. You, you, you have to do it like a puzzle. And then everything had to come apart and be able to be castable, too, which was... Um, so I'm, I'm glad you, you guys like it. it, it uh, I, I think it came out okay. Uh, it looks like a box art. <laughs> I told Mark I wouldn't want to cast it. but um, No, neither would I. I think Brokaw called me and he was choking. He was really <laughs> choking. Yeah. yeah, he might have been hanging from the rafters. Of his <laughs> I see the opposite. I think this is one of those things that he would get off on. Like, oh, my God, I get to cast this. And, like, he's out in the no. corner somewhere with it. Well, Being, but being well, a the, the cage, the yeah. cages. I I got on the phone with Mark. I was like, "Please don't kill me." What do you think of these cages? He's like, eh. you know, he's he's always he's, he's the engineer, just constantly think, thinking these things through his brain. He's like, eh, "I've got some ideas already on how I'm going to do those." Yeah. So he'll solve it. Uh, those will. I be mean, he's got he can cast things with like jeweler's film and stuff like that. So he yeah. and, and he knows exactly where to slice things. I mean, the guy's such a pro. Yes. I wouldn't trust anybody else to be able to do what he can do. I mean, I, I, I've given kits to some guys and I try to make them as easy as possible. And they're, they're like, how does this work? And it, <laughs> you know, comes back and like, you know, they've, they've squeezed the mold. So that like half the body's really smashed and then it gets big again. And I, I go, well, there goes the 37 hours I put into that. So, 
<clears throat> but the coolest thing, Jeff, uh, the, what, what I thought was cool was the characters that you sculpted into the into the little critters. Oh, <laughs> I mean, the bats, the bat. My, my wife loves the bat. I mean, the, the bat, uh, we call it Snaggletooth. It's, <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, looking at it right now. I'm looking at oh, it right now. Yeah, right. it's uh, so cool looking. And uh, and then what Jeff told me, which uh, you can't see in any of the pictures, but he's like, well, we've got these cages. I mean, something needs to be in the cages. So uh, so I guess you sculpted a couple rats, uh, right. Jeff. To, or in the, right. I guess they're, they're, they're next to go in the soup she's making or something. But um, yeah, so that's kind of cool. It's a little extra. It's not on the box art, but uh, there'll be little rats that are in the cages. Well, on the, on the original model, I think they did a relief of like a spider and a rat, and but it was like a picture, a 3D picture of, of the, whatever mm -hmm. was in those cages. Um, but yeah, no, I thought, well, you can't have just empty cages there. So I did a couple of rats for that. But the reason I put character into some of those bats faces is because they were so, they're almost nondescript in the painting. I couldn't figure out what I was looking at. Yeah. I thought, well, I can do, I can do what's there in which people go, wow, Jaeger really kind of, you know, got lazy on this and just did another potato. But then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but then I thought, well, I'll put some little, I think I can take a little bit of artistic license, you know, because they're so small. Very cool. It's gorgeous. It's simple. Well, and what I like is um, to touch on, you know, you did the one for Tweeter Head, which is brew, was it? Or what was it? Uh, Nancy's Kitchen. Nancy's Kitchen. And it was beautiful. And it was what, 300 pieces or something? Something like that. He just kept that, you know, his original idea was to do a witch, but he wanted elements of the original box art. Mm -hmm. and I thought, oh, well, I'll probably never get around to doing the, the witch because I hadn't heard from Terry Fitton. And so I thought maybe I'll just kind of, you know, do it a little bit like the witch and it'll kind of be the answer for anybody who may want to try to jam mm -hmm. that in there. Um, so I, when I did a, a, a design for the base, I just kind of took some elements from that. And he really liked that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Then he just kept adding stuff. Like he'd add cages <laughs> and he'd call me and go, I want a hand with canned with candles with fingers and I, I go, you're okay because that's going to be another but and he didn't care he his money for some reason was endless so he just kept adding things and then i doubt if he made 20 <clears throat> i mean you can't get one i don't it, have one i don't have one you cannot get one it, it's oh. it's so um so when i saw this i was worried are we gonna have another big giant witch diorama and there's so much going on in this yet it's compact if you know what yeah. i mean it, it's like the box art kits in that it's it's still within itself it's not crazy right that's what i like about the box art kits there are constraints mm -hmm. you know although the the uh <laughs> i forgot about depth of field and the hunchback that goes like way back like oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i thought that came out okay it's expensive but it looks good with the package when, this is know, a beautiful well, kit mark any plans <laughs> on um casting that cauldron clear in case someone wants to light it or that's um well jeff designed it uh he sculpted it in such a way that uh well i, I know the i think the flames can be done in clear i, I don't know if we want to do the whole cauldron in clear um, mm -hmm. i haven't actually wanna... seen the sculpture in person so it's hard for me to know right. what our options are but um you might, I don't know, you might be able to do something where the, the bubbling top is clear. Yeah, yeah. That, I guess that's what I meant more than anything. Yeah. Uh, but there's a space underneath the cauldron where people can put lighting, light bulbs and stuff. He Mark asked me to leave a little space under there, so there's about a half an inch. Can I ask, space. what material do you sculpt in? Sculpey. Um, almost exclusively. I mean, I've done it in almost every material. I mean, I just did a, I'm doing a big um, T-Rex from the original 1933 Kong, and it's, you know, three oh. feet long. And uh, I did that in, in um, uh, uh, Chavant clay. Um, so I've done all materials. I mean, I, I, I work a lot in the movies. And so we, we sculpted anything from water-based clay to Chavant, yeah. depending on how big the pieces are. So I've done everything. Um, but for the small stuff, I like Sculpey. I'm really used to it. And I didn't at first. I mean, I, I, the first couple of kits I sculpted were in uh, that oil-based stuff, you know, you get when you're in school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the only clay I could find. And so, but it was really tough to cast and handle and you could get fingerprints in it. And it was really hard to smooth down. So my, my brother uh, introduced me to Sculpey, which could be sanded and, and things. So then, and it was a little bit to me like sculpting in bubble gum. So I didn't like it at first, but now I'm really used to it. So I do almost everything in Sculpey. Although Sideshow used to have us do it a lot in wax because you can get that really super fine detail. Yeah. But uh, wax is really messy. Uh, I like sculpting the best. 
Well, this is this is a beautiful, beautiful kit. Yeah. Uh, again, the witch is not my favorite Aurora kit. And but it's Mark, the base that makes it. I mean, the but base it is, is the base that makes it. But when Mark yeah. announced he was going to do it, I said, "Well, I might not get the witch, but of course now I'm on the list already." <laughs> um, yeah. Wait, there's a yeah. list. Uh, <laughs> Just and uh, yeah, gee, this yeah. Gee, gee, gee. I wonder which one's next. G. G. I wonder which one's next. Hmm. Actually, we've got several choices. And, yeah, actually, we're going to do. We're not. We're not married to the. G. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and, where uh, are you headed? I mean, I don't want you to give anything away, but that's up to you if you well, want to. Well, well there was we're, one we were keeping under wraps. Ha ha, that's my joke. Uh, <laughs> what was it about a month ago or two months ago, Mark? I sent you this photo. Yeah. And I said, hey, you Scott, notice the difference between these? It's got uh, like finding ways for me to do more projects. Um <laughs> so. he's really good at giving other people work to do. I know that very well. Mm-hmm. And he calls yeah. himself the talent, and then I have to do everything else. Well, <laughs> so Scott Scott sent me a picture of a, a mummy kit that was never, uh, or at least the box art was never used. It's in a it's in an Aurora catalog, and Scott, I can't remember which catalog that was. But uh, oh, I think it's a sixty eight. But I could put wrong. the picture up. Wait a minute, yeah, there yeah, it picture's is. up. Yep, picture and up. Uh, <laughs> and it was also um, in Famous Monsters in the ads. That's the first place I saw it. Right. Oh, okay. It was in the famous monster ads when the glow kits first came out. So it's it's a different pose. He's like walking forward and he's got his hand out and uh, uh, it, it looks pretty cool. And uh, I socialize that with Jeff and he's like, yeah, that might be cool. Because, and Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, so, so I don't know when you started the line, but but it was quite a while ago, right? I mean. Oh, yeah, it was. It must have been in the, it was sometime in the 90s, I think. Maybe so, maybe it was in the nineties. Maybe it was maybe it was. Uh, see, I think I was about thirty-five. So that was, God, that was twenty-four years ago. Yeah. <clears throat> so when I did mention it to Jeff, and, you that know, makes him fifty-nine. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, fifty-nine. Yeah. You're good at math. I'm terrible. I would have been like. Nah, nah. I'd hide my age, but it's all over IMDb now. Thank you very much. So. You no, know, I was going to ask, and I said, <clears throat> "Well, you know, Jeff, according to IMDb, yeah, is this correct?" <laughs> <laughs> I know you used to be able to lie and you know get away with stuff, and oh yes, I just finished a large film, and then they go to IMDb, and you you did it six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get away with what you used to be able to in this industry. <laughs> so and uh, so we're thinking about those two kits and. Uh, then Mark, do you uh, you have it on uh, what you had sent us? So can I bring up the uh, third idea, um, the uh, customizing uh, possibility? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, too late, Jeff, I did. <laughs> yeah, Jeff and I, Jeff and I have talked about that too. I mean, you know, you might as well. In order to really truly complete the Aurora box art line, you know, the the customizing kits would be something. And and some people might say, "Gee, how do you do that?" Um, but you know, Jeff and I talked about it. He's, he, he, you know, he can come up with a creative way to display all these elements together so that they form a kit or a scene or whatever. Yeah, we can figure it out. I mean, the, yeah. the Frankenstein kit had a castle way in the background and rather than do that, it did a castle shaped tombstone. Ah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you, you figure out ways how to, you know, make things work. Yep. So, uh, so that would probably... Uh, completely actually uh, we've got a couple of other ideas that we've tossed around that aren't even really um, uh, aurora kits uh, but they would kind of be relatable to it um so anyways we're 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 talking about that uh that might be pretty interesting for some people so uh, exciting stuff okay very very pestilence labs we're gonna put the website up and um Anybody that wants to get on the list, Mark's not taking money or anything yet, but if you want to get on the list for the witch, um, we're going to give you the email either up on the screen. Can you do that, Jason? I hope. And uh, yeah, who knows? What is the email? Mark, give us the email in case everyone wants. Yes, yeah, so I can do that. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you've got it. Uh, okay. put it. Put it up there. Yeah, it is fine. And um, unfortunately, I can't even tell anybody what, what it's going to cost, but... Um, mm-hmm. Do you have you a know, ballpark I, I, or anything? Well, I, I, I don't like pricing things yeah. over $200. Um, I, I, so I'm going to try my best to keep it uh, affordable. Um, but I can't imagine it being uh, less than $199. But 
you know, we'll, we'll see. And it's going to be worth it. It's going to be, uh, you know, excellent quality. And of course it's, you know, my, my objective after Jeff sculpts it is to produce something that looks like exactly, you know, is, is a beautiful representation of what he sculpted for, for the hobbyists. So that's, that's you've done I'm really doing. well. I think you're, you've done your production skills are quite good. I mean, you're, you. you're kind of redefining it hopefully for everybody else too. So. Yeah. And anyone that's <clears throat> got a kit from Mark knows that he includes a certificate of authenticity. Um, yep. Does Jeff sign those? Do you sign those too? Or is it those are just signed I, for him? I know you do some for Paul, but I, I'm not sure. You're making more work for the man. Stop. Sorry. I, well, I want to find work for everyone. I don't care. <laughs> but, no, I, haven't, uh, I haven't had Jeff sign them. Uh, but yeah, it's a certificate. But, it's got a little gold foil, you know, stamped, sealed gold mm -hmm. foil on it. Well, yeah, that's what I was getting at. It's so professional. You get the box art type looking thing. You get the, you throw on a sticker that I think come from, uh, Jeff Carlson Maniac. there, Maniac. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, I'd like to get him on. He's got cool stuff. And uh, castings are really clean. And, castings are know, beautiful. Are... Yeah, um, <clears throat> it's awesome. So, if you haven't bought a kit from Mark, um, Jason, if you haven't bought a kit from Mark, this would be a this wow. would be a good ouch. Start. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know. So uh, I haven't bought a kit in a long time. <laughs> well, you know. So let's um let's let's move from pestilence and uh, let me ask Mark a question. Yeah, Mark, ballpark me because I'm going to give you an exact number. Mm -hmm. How many kits that Jeff sculpted do you think you have? <laughs> no pressure. Oh gosh, <laughs> I've probably got. I'm I'm, I'm going to guess about forty. <laughs> really? <laughs> wow. Okay, Jeff. Yes, sir. And, and I have a model inventory, so I can go buy it. I wrote it here just so you see it. <laughs> 67 Jaeger kits. Nice. 67 <laughs> kits that nice. Jeff sculpted. Nice. 67. Okay. My Six goal is to get everybody to seven. sell all of their other kits and just see who can get the biggest Jeff Jaeger collection. So, <laughs> um, you know, and, are, and Jason, how many Jeff Jaeger kits? I don't do know. <laughs> I don't know, honestly. Well, we did a little counting before uh, you guys signed on. Close as I can tell, Jason's number is three. Three. It's more than that. Okay. <laughs> So he has. I don't know. <laughs> you have John's. You have John's mummy. There's stuff in boxes. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Know you have John's that. mummy. You have the Bride of Frankenstein uh, Mobius kit, and you have the mm -hmm. Ghost of. Uh... Let's ask Jeff. What do you call that kit, Jeff? The Ghost of Castle Mare? Is it Castle Mare? Castel Mare. Castel Mare. Okay. All right. If Jeff Castel says, oh, look at him. Look at him. What he's doing to me. Look at him. He's such a dick. Okay. Yeah. Don't do it. Finally. <laughs> Since so then, June, we've been having this argument. Sorry. Okay. So who won the, the money? Box, what was me? the pool up to? <laughs> on the hunchback box, is it Notre okay. Dame or is it Notre? It's Notre. Notre, it's no, Notre Dame. It's French. All right. Yeah. If Jeff says it, it must be See, true. Scott's a Chicago guy that doesn't know how to speak other Whatever. languages other than Pulaski and sausage. <laughs> right, Whatever. I have 67 Jeff Yeager kits. What have you done to keep Jeff? I got 5 billion miniatures. I don't know. <laughs> you haven't even kept Jeff eating for a day. Okay. <laughs> I, all right. Actually, Please. I think I have. Right. I think I have. <laughs> I, I've got a healthy appetite. <laughs> At least a day. I got a day. <laughs> so, Jeff. Let me ask you this. I'm sure you've yes, been sir. So many yes, questions sir. a zillion times. <clears throat> how many kits, and I'm not even talking what you've done for a sideshow, how many kits do you think you've sculpted in the last, what, 30 years, 40 years now? I started, I sculpted my first kit when I was 23. I'm 59. Okay. <clears throat> that's uh, a lot of, that's a lot of years. That's 37, <laughs> 36, 36 years. Include busts. Mm -hmm. Including busts. Yeah. Include I, I busts. To tell you the truth, I have no idea. Um, I, I know I've done over 50 Frankensteins. Yeah, that was um, going to be one of my questions. Too. Yeah, 50 Frankensteins. And I think the number is somewhere between five and 600. Wow. Uh, but I can't be sure because I don't have all my own stuff either. Mm -hmm. um, I've sold a lot of my early stuff that I, don't, that I didn't like. Uh, some stuff I didn't bother getting in the first place. Um, some stuff I, there are many, many things I did for Sideshow that never saw the light of day. Um, so I, I probably have about 400 and some, mm -hmm. but they, I know there's about a hundred I don't have. Have you ever done <laughs> any Lord of the Rings for Sideshow? Yeah, a bunch of them. Yeah. Which ones? <laughs> I did. They did. Uh, uh, oh, you want to up your number? You want to up my number? <laughs> I did an Aragorn for them where he's holding the, the sword, the broken sword. I did. Um, 
um who's the 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 elfin guy the blonde haired elf legolas legolas yeah. i did a legolas bust in third scale i also did a legolas quarter scale for them which came out really nice any of the bad guys um i did <laughs> the i did the orcs two orcs fighting uh, aragorn i did the um aragorn fighting the the ghost king that's cool. uh, which is a big big yeah, ass diorama yeah. about that day big i did uh the christopher lee uh wizard oh i love that fight, piece fighting uh, gandalf the gray yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and uh so i did that piece for them um Okay, sure I didn't want. Were, to, okay. I'm sure there are. I'm looking around the room. As, yeah, as I'm trying to remember, but I, I think there were like ten pieces I did. Oh, do you oh, hate Lord of the Rings, or do you? <clears throat> you uh, as the films, uh, anything in general. I hate to say it because Peter Jackson collects my stuff, so forgive me, Peter. Um, I, I wasn't a, <laughs> a fan of of the the films. Uh, I, I was a fan of the books more than I was of the films. I know a lot of people were diehard fans, including, you know, some of my favorite people in the world. So I, I mean, it's, maybe it's just me. Um, I did. I like the Hobbit, the, the, the film version of the Hobbit. I see. I did. I'm, I'm the opposite. <laughs> really? Yeah. I, yeah. A lot of people are, but I love the cartoon, like the Rankin and Bass Hobbit. I love those old, like I want people to do more. It just goes along with Scott animation sculptures of those old Hobbit and the return of the King cartoons that Rankin and Bass did back in the, what seventies? Those are so. I like you that two, di two dimensional stuff they did. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that was kind of cool. That I'm going to go on record, cool. Jeff. If Peter Jackson's watching this, I will sit through those movies. If he comes <laughs> in and says, "Hey, I'm watching your stuff," have you? Or ever how about Richard Taylor? Movie? If we got him too, we'll get. Uh, no. <laughs> Peter Jackson ever watches us? I'm in. I watch. Okay. I hope he yeah, calls you. True. Oh, dude. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> as a kid i couldn't even get through the books although i got through the hobbit it's because he doesn't know how to read that's hobbit. why <laughs> okay <laughs> well that that is you know that's where you must start with the reading skills uh, that has yeah, to be right, right, yeah <laughs> um i just thought i i just i just uh i don't know i don't want to really get into what no. why i mean yeah, i'm sure I, my opinion is meaningless and uh you know so it, it doesn't really matter but so many people do love those films i know and and by the way when Sideshow was first starting out, they were struggling for quite some time when they were doing Universal Monsters and even the the uh, superhero stuff until they got the Lord of the Rings franchise. Yeah, and oh. they took off. I hmm. mean, those things were so popular uh, worldwide. They that's what actually made them the behemoth company they are now. So yeah. there's something there. You know. <laughs> so what was your first hmm. sculpt? Because I remember the first sculpt of yours I saw. I want to say it was 1989. Right. I and think I know. A friend of mine came in, uh, and I, I've talked about him before, Kurt Kraus. And he came in, he goes, hey, guys, check this out. And it was your first Curse of the Werewolf, you know, with the arms up. Right. And it kind of looked like that famous Monsters cover. Um, and I remember looking at it going, oh, my God, the detail in this thing. Because it was, I was used to Aurora. At the time, that's yeah. all I was collecting was Aurora. Yeah. So I'm looking at this thing going, Jesus Christ, look at this. This is awesome. You know, and it was cast. It was probably one of your original castings. So it was cast in that shit resin that we all had back in the day. Right, right, right. And was I it hollow? Yeah, it was, was hollow. It, yeah, it was hollow. It, it, really, it was one of the ones I cast by hand before I found yeah. out that I'm allegedly allergic to the material. So oh, I, can't, okay. I, I can't do it anymore. But back in the day, you know. I was young and didn't know what I was doing. I'm covered with this stuff. And I wonder why my skin is itching all the time. Oh, yeah. you know. So was um, that your first kid or were there kids before that? I know there was a mummy that Janice uh, was using. And yes, I, that was not my first kid. My first kid actually was, and I, I had, my brother and I had done a lot of sculpting. My brother's Kevin Yeager and he's a big mucky muck special effects guy. He created Freddy Krueger and the Chucky doll from child's play. And he's a big Hollywood uh, special okay. effects artist. He did, uh, actually, I worked for him. We, we did all the special effects for Bill and Ted Face the Music, which which just came out. Which uh, was fantastic. Oh, good. I'm glad I you loved liked it. That. Those those big muscle suits that they had. In they the, were great. The, the, <laughs> our, uh, I sculpted them. Oh, cool. So, yeah. Um, so uh, Kevin and I had been doing sculpting since we were kids. I mean, we, we were the kind of kids that come up from the basement and say, hi, mom. And our foreheads would go, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and then we'd, we'd always, you know, trying to pretend that we cut our finger and stuff until she caught on. But um so, but I hadn't done any, and, and, you know, I was an Aurora guy. So 
mm-hmm. uh, you know, the, the rubber bands, the card table, your father with the glue. Every, I mean, it was all, I had the exact same. The rubber bands. That brings back. Like... Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I hadn't tried anything small until I, I, but I would always go to whatever city I was in, if I was in school or if I was touring with a company or whatever, I'd check out the hobby shops to see if I could find some model that I'd missed, you know, cause I had all the auroras and I had all the monsters of, of the movies kits. And I, you know, every once in a while I'd come across something that I didn't have. And so, and, and I think it was Ravel had come out with the Dune sandworm. Now <clears throat> I didn't really like the movie Dune, but I'd seen it because my friend Kyle McLaughlin, who was my roommate, um, Back in, uh, we did Summerstock together, was the lead in, in Dune. Wait, really? You were roommates yeah. with him? Yeah. That's awesome. And uh, so I'd, I'd been very excited about getting this Dune Sandworm kit. And I brought it home and I opened it up and I paid like 12 bucks for this, which for me was a lot of money for a, for a model kit since most of them were like two or three bucks. I mean, if you paid five dollars, that was a lot. So $12. And I, this thing, I, I, I opened it up and this thing looked like they took a vacuum a cleaner hose and glued an artichoke to the end of it. I mean, it was terrible. And I was so disappointed. I thought, this sucks. I paid 12 bucks for this piece of crap. And I was so upset. Well, I wasn't that upset, but I was a little upset. And, and I thought, I wonder if I could have done this better. So I said, what I think I'll do is I'll just sculpt something that I think the kit should have been, and that'll make me feel better. So I got out my little, you know, plastiline clay, and I did a little dune sandworm and a little ship and a little, like, desert base and i was kind of happy with it and i was asking my brother i said is there a way to make this in plastic and he said well we use a thing called lw 101 which is a polyurethane when we do teeth and claws and stuff like that and he said that may work and so that was the first time i'd ever been introduced to the idea of resin and i'd never seen it before i'd never been in the united states before i was i was 23 so this was 1984 and uh, and this was even before i'd seen the, the billiken kits I don't even think it come to the States yet. So I took this stuff and it was really tricky to use and it kicked off, but I, I, you know, was able to get a nice casting out of it. And then I thought, you know what, the Billiken kits then came out and I went, I wonder if I can do this too, because these are really great. But they're, the idea is they're actually getting close to what the movies look like. And my favorite uh, werewolf was The Curse of the Werewolf. Um, I've always wanted, you know, I love that film. It was the, I saw it when I was a kid on my birthday. My father used to let me stay up all night uh, and I'd watch monster movies all night long. And so that, the evil of Frankenstein, and, you know, he's asleep on the couch next to me and I'm doing, this is great. This is great. I couldn't get enough of it. So, and I did that. And now I look at that sculpture today and I just go, wow, God, you can just do so much better than that. But at the time, um, I, I would do it in between acting, you know, gigs, or I would do it in my trailer there's a lot of downtime in your trailer and you can go to the set and just talk to the crew or you can go and sit in your trailer. And so I started bringing it with me to this, to my trailer. And I ended up kind of leaving it alone for a while. I, I, I went on to something else and I left it at my brother's shop and um, Rick Baker, do you know who Rick Baker is? Everybody knows Rick Baker, right? I think yeah. I've heard of Rick Baker. Yeah. I know this is surprising everyone. <clears throat> yes, I know who Rick it Baker is. It is surprising. It is very right. surprising. He's done, he's done a few things. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he had, was visiting my brother's shop and, said hey who did that and pointed to the my sculpture of the curse of the werewolf and kevin said uh oh that's my brother jeff he's just doing that for fun he goes you know he could sell that and my brother told me this and i was like really and so i finished it molded it and did it in lw101 which is what the makeup artists were using and took it to a place called kitcraft which is now a very famous um uh, hobby shop here in los angeles and Mike, the owner, I, I asked him, you know, if you would be interested in buying it. And he said, well, we'll put it in the window and see how it does. And it was gone in an hour. Mm-hmm. He called me up and he said, do you have any more? So I made 10 more and they were gone in like two days. So that's kind of how I supplemented my income for a while was, you know, and this is before, I, again, I, I discovered that I was allergic to it. And then I would hire my friends to do it, <laughs> you know. And so they all ruined their kitchens because you, once you spill that stuff on your linoleum, that's going, you know, so they <laughs> But I had like all my friends working for me. Uh, so that was actually the first one I put into production. But the Dune Sandworm was the very first kit I ever tried wow. to make. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It's <laughs> a long ass story. No, no, I like it. And the thing is, I like the Dune movie. So I'm one of the rare people. I've actually well, been to Kit Craft. Mm-hmm. You have the, been to Kit Craft? I, I've been to Kit Craft, yeah, one time when I was uh, 
up that you know i love that place. i was vacationing you know mm-hmm. we were doing the whole universal studios thing and all that so like you i see a mm-hmm. hobby shop i'm like hobby shop you yep. know and back then i was more into aurora collecting back then yeah but as i started to see like i said when i saw your curse of the werewolf and like you said the billikins and to me the billikin frankenstein still stands up to this day yeah okay um yeah. It, it's 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 just it's still in my mind it's 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 perfect you know it's soft you know given what you've done over the years the details kind of soft you know because it's vinyl you know right and right. i imagine the original sculpt was probably a little sharper but um up until then i don't think anyone did a really great Karloff frankenstein until that came out and no you're right it still holds up i mean i still you know it's one of the few when i sold off all my kits i had tons of kits that weren't mine um that's one of the few I kept because I keep looking at it going, I got to beat this. I got to beat this. Mm-hmm. I'm still working on it. 50 well, kids later. Oh, no. You, you, <laughs> you beat it um, <clears throat> numerous times. So um, do you ever get tired of sculpting Frankenstein? I mean, like when someone says, hey, I want you to do a Frank. Like I know you just did one for Monsters from the Woods, John Deary, that uh, son of Frankenstein. Right. And I even say, and I have, like I said, I have 67 kits. I didn't even break it down. I should have said how many Frankensteins on that Jaeger Frankenstein. <laughs> Do you ever just say to yourself, another fucking Frankenstein? I can't believe these guys are sending me another one. Or do you just um, say, hey, if they want to try to sell it, just that that's fine. You know, um, I try to talk them into something that's not going to be something I've sculpted before. So at least, because um, what I want to do is actually get, sculpt so many Frankensteins that I could just put one right next to the other, the other and tell the entire story of all three movies. <laughs> Just by like doing a <laughs> slow pan. Perfect. <laughs> um, I then take pictures and make a stop motion version of it. Yeah. I, wouldn't that be great? Yeah. I, you can like morph, <laughs> you can like do a yeah. morph thing and, right? yeah. and then you know, have, the, have the dialogue in the background. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. Well, and tell the story. Steve Riojas had a great idea. Uh, him and I used to talk about, and that was he would take the Janus mummy, you know, where he's in the sarcophagus. Right. And then put uh the one you did for john where he's kind of leaning back so you'd have that one on there too and then the <laughs> one you did for john deary where he's walking out the door and right you have it all on one you know and i said steve that's a great idea you should do that i don't know you know if he'll ever get to that but you know because it like you said it almost tells the story and of course that's right we never saw yeah and um you know of the uh you know, here he's in, then he then he's kind of you know in that first one he's kind of leaning back. Um, you you had a couple the you had, I I always call that the Jaeger lean because there were like three kits you did for John in a row where they were leaning back. The, right, kind of right, right, right. So I used to tell John, oh yeah, it's got the Jaeger lean, and um, but I was like, but that's so cool because it's like you know he's unsteady obviously he hasn't walked in thousands of years. And then you did that one for Monsters from the Woods where he's going out the door. And it was like, so that, yeah, that tells well, us. You're story. limited in that storytelling ability. Every time somebody approaches me to do a mummy, I, I you know, they're so, I mean, basically he wakes up and his arm falls down and that's it. Yep. You know, <laughs> and that's all you see except for those rags. And I thought, mm-hmm. you know, and in fact, the, the quarter scale that I did for, uh, for James, uh, I, I thought, well, he comes back later as Imhot- Im- Imhotep or whoever, mm-hmm. uh, um, and he's got this little piece of pottery. And I thought, well, obviously he was the mummy. He went out and he dug out this little piece of pottery. So I thought, let's do that. Where he's got the little, there's a little shovel down there. He dug up a damn piece of pottery to get in, you know, and he's following the map because he's trying to find his lady love or whatever. I said, we got to do something other than, you know, this and this. I mean, that's, that's all you have. <laughs> so we're doing it. I'm actually doing another one for Troy that's, uh, is going to tell the story in between that. So it'll be something else. And uh, I think I know what it is. And yeah. I can only say it's an idea I had a long time ago. I wish it was one six scale. Cause I know if you do it for Troy, it'll be one eighth. It is. yeah. But it is it, it'll still be cool because it, it's I'm 90% sure I know what it is. And um, yeah, I, I know there's photograph, but there's nothing. It was never, uh, it's, never it's on the cutting room floor somewhere. So, right. 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 And, uh, I mean, they, Kind of did black. Uh, what was it? Um, oh shoot, I can't remember the, the guys that they kind of did the diorama without the without the archaeologist in it. Oh, uh, dark horse, kind of dark horse. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's kind of like that, except we're going to put the archaeologist there. Yeah. Went for a little walk. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, I like I like that line that you're doing with Troy. That's that's good. That's pretty exciting. Oh yeah. No, I think that's cool. Like I started doing those a while back for Terry Fitton. Uh, we did a couple of mummy things, and and uh, we got that creature with the boat coming down. And I don't know if oh, you've the, ever seen yeah, that. Yeah, the bony encounter. Yeah. Right, the bony encounter. So I, I I was always interested in getting back into that. I really enjoy that that uh, kind of expanded aurora idea. Well, the one you did for sideshow, even the uh, I think you did it, the Renfield yeah. and Dracula on the stairs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I always thought that would be a good uh, garage kit as well, you know, because it's just and then. Uh, the sideshow one came out and I was like, and oh, now you can't even touch that thing for under like 750 or $800. I to, know. I know. It's Literally, like, it's amazing. amazing. And like you the said, they and didn't... white ones are really, yeah. I, mean, I, got, I mean, I don't know if you can see them. They're, they're up there on the shelf up there. There's yeah, Frankenstein. And, and yeah, there's uh, the Dracula and Renfield next to daredevil. For right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And, and then they've also got a uh, creature carrying uh what's your face? Julia. Julia, yeah, yeah. What's her face? Orthling's over there cringing. How do you not know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really. Now, speaking of uh, just just a little piece of uh, tidbit. Uh, speaking of of uh, what's her face. <clears throat> um, <Okay>. uh, <laughs> so I uh, my um, my full scale creature. I've actually got it autographed by Julie and uh, and Rico. She actually signed it. Julie, what's her face? No. Oh. So, <laughs> What? Yeah, what? Just, you know, I, I live in Melbourne. <laughs> I live in Melbourne, Florida. I mean, there's there's nothing around here other than you know you got Space Center. I mean, nothing goes on here. There's, we had this little uh, Comic Con thing at the local airport, uh, Hilton, and I mean, it's tiny. I mean, just and and somehow or another, they got Julie Adams uh, to come out here and Rico, and they were they were here together. And it's really kind of touching. I got uh, so I, I I I finished painting my Alfrey creature, and I said, "Hey, can I just put it in your booth, and it can just be in there with you guys?" And they were thrilled. So, um, but I got a great picture of the two of them together with the creature, and it was just really really nice. Wow, of course, Julie's That's great. gone now, and uh, you know, then maybe can... you can send us, and we'll put it up here right now. Oh, okay, we'll do. <laughs> yep, I'll, I'll send you. I'll send you. I just. I just realized we're coast to coast right now. Yes, Left, we are. Center, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, that's crazy. Oh Technology. my god! Yeah, who's in New York? Uh, well, well Mark, we're Mark's in Florida. Florida. You're East Coast. That, I still count right. that as East Coast. I'm about three mm -hmm. miles from the uh, well, six miles from the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, East Coast, and then we're in. Yeah, I was telling Mark <laughs> earlier today. I do something today that he never has to do. Tuning up my snowblower. <laughs> and it's like, ah, no. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Dude, it's either. brutal here today. I'm hoping to be in the pool December 20th. Oh, yeah. I hate you yeah. all. I I'm hoping it all. don't snow December 20th. So. <laughs> really? Now, what? what's the weather like where we are? It's it's 87 degrees here. It's hot as crap. Yeah. It's, mm. What was it? About 65 mm. today? And 65 and an as winds? windy yeah. as you could possibly imagine. Really? Yeah. My wife would love it there. She hates the heat. I, really I like yeah, it. I couldn't do the heat either. My my, you should see my DWP bill. Oh my god, it's insane. <laughs> <laughs> like I think it was like eighteen hundred dollars last time. Wow, for oh to god. run the air conditioner, which oh is this god. giant behemoth, coughing, sputtering, smoking, you know, chitty chitty <laughs> bang bang, air conditioner. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. So Jeff, there was a period where you kind of hmm. disappeared. I don't want to say you disappeared, but you weren't as prominent in the garage kid hobby. Right. Um, were you doing I, other things? Were you working special effects acting? Uh, I was doing, I was, I was, uh, for a while I had done a couple of TV series back to back. And when you do those, um, I did a sitcom and then I did a, a an hour uh, drama. And when you do those, your, your time is not your own. You I mean, it just completely mm -hmm. eats up all your time. I mean, I try to work it in a little bit because like I said, I get bored in my trailer. But um, uh, there was a, a number of years where I was really busy. Um, and then, I, but I would always get back into it when, you know, the job was over because I'd need something to do. And then, uh, and then there was a while when I just worked for Tucky because I was also working for Sideshow. And mm -hmm. Sideshow had me for a good 10 years, I think. And, and uh, uh, their stuff is really, really super elaborate. I mean, they had me doing predators and things like that and you can spend a week on just on the machinery um 
for some of that stuff. So, um, so I, I told John I would I would only do uh, sculpts for him if we, and we made a deal where you know uh, I just would do it the way I wanted to. Not a lot of back and forth, not a lot of notes, nothing like that. I just he would ask me tell me what he wanted and I would go away and do it, and there was no time limit or anything like that because um, I, I just simply didn't have enough time to deal with clients who all have you know. They, are, they all want to get th certain things done by a certain amount of time because they're investing their money and they want to return on it. So uh, John was kind enough to say, listen, whenever you get around to it, it's fine. So uh, that's when we did the Jaeger Classics. We started the Jaeger Classics. One. How many were there? I want to say were there 25 or more or somewhere between 25 and 30 Jaeger Classics? I, I think there were uh, there were almost 40. Wow. If you, if you count uh, the ones that we produced after he died. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and some of the ones, some of the things he would say, I would just at first go, there's no way. I, want to. I mean, every, you know, some of them were, were personal ones that he loved, but he knew wouldn't sell very well, like Dracula's daughter, mm -hmm. which, you know, I arch an eyebrow when he told me that I said, I'd love to do the character, but I mean, this is not going to sell. And he goes, I know, but I always wanted one. And so whenever we would do that, and of course he'd sell like six, um, then he'd go, okay, time for another Frankenstein because no matter <laughs> oh, yeah. how many Frankensteins he did, if he I wants to, to make up the money yep. of losing on some kid, he'd just do a Frankenstein or a creature and he'd get all his money back. So yeah, I remember he used to tell me, uh, Jeff don't like doing creatures too much. He'd say, I didn't, I hated yeah, doing the creature. says, uh, you know, cause we'd always say, mm. Hey, why don't you have Jeff do a creature? Uh, Steve Riojas and I would talk to John and how about, a, how about another creature? Uh, Joe, no, uh, Jeff don't want to do uh, creatures. Uh, he wants to charge me a little more for those. So, you know, <laughs> I did because, you know, and uh, scales. Yeah. scales. I mean, my, I got a bad back anyway. Yeah. So, you know, you're sitting in the, in, in one position for 10 hours, putting the, the 7 billion scale on this thing going, oh my God, I hate my life. So, so do you uh, have a favorite in that line? Do you have a favorite? I mean, it, it, just in that yeah. line, do you have a favorite? In John's line? Yeah. Can ask you too, Mark. So start thinking. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> do I have a favorite? I do. Um, my favorite is oddly enough, and it, it wasn't a huge seller, but for some reason, I just um, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen a movie called Man of a Thousand Faces. It was Jimmy Cagney um, yeah. playing Lon yeah. Chaney Sr. And in that, he does. Uh, there's a little section where he plays Lon Chaney playing the Phantom of the Opera. Mm. And so we did. Law, uh, uh, Cagney as Cheney. Yeah, as I remember Cagney. that one. Yep. And uh, that one's right up here. I don't know if you can see right behind me. Yeah, I can. Oh, oh yeah. Right. There. And wasn't that makeup what the Aurora box art is kind of based on too? Yeah, it is what the Aurora box art is based on. And that was the the um, third Aurora kit I'd gotten as a kid, and I just loved that box art. And How so. About you? Oh, okay. I'm sorry, yeah. Jeff. Go ahead. Finish up. So I, I put him in a, in a really dramatic pose, and and um, mm -hmm. um, for some reason that's always been my favorite one. <clears throat> and it didn't it wasn't a big seller so how about you mr worthling <clears throat> um well again creature guy uh th that uh <laughs> revenge uh that's uh on the anchor creating the scene where he's literally yeah. again another very creative scene where the creature appears to be uh swimming in buoyant water you know he's uh attached to that anchor Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a huge kid. I mean, it's so much bigger than uh, people. If you look at a picture, you're like, oh, there's a kid. Uh, but when you look at the kid in person, it's gigantic. It's just so uh, beautiful. And, and Jeff, that's that's a gorgeous piece. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, 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 I probably uh, have two. So, oh, what are yours? <clears throat> so mm -hmm. um, well, first of all, there's a special place in my heart for the first one, which was the Frankenstein, the windmill one. Mm -hmm. And... Um, just because I thought you captured the posture of the monster at that point in time, you know, where he's leaning forward and he's kind of hunched over and he's got that grimace going. And it's like, but my two favorite, probably number two, I would say was the bat, the wolf man jumping after the bat. Oh yeah. Um, really <laughs> like that one for whatever I reason. I, I, hey, he does. All right. Well, that? I did that for AFM. Look at that. Really? Okay. Oh, cool. Oh, that's great. Oh, good. <laughs> and my my favorite, and uh, I hopefully have one coming soon, is the Phantom and Christine. Now, what's funny about that is I'm not a Phantom of the Opera fan, okay? But that kit is beautiful. And the, yeah. the sculpt on the Christine, especially the dress 
and everything. It, it, it's just beautiful. And a lot of people said, yeah, but if there was the organ there and all that, and I said, no, this thing stands alone beautifully. And um, I'm, I'm glad to be getting one because <laughs> it, it's, uh, I probably skipped buying one from John numerous times. Um, but it, it, it's, yeah, that one's my favorite. And the um, I was glad you like that. special mention, mm -hmm. Tom Tyler Mummy. The Tom Tyler Mummy is oh, a no. great sculpt. And, and that mummy? That's the one. <clears throat> <laughs> and, and what I like about that one is I didn't order that from John initially. Mm -hmm. And I was helping him at his table, I think the second to last Wonderfest he was at. And it was Sunday and I had a little extra <clears throat> money. Excuse me. I'm looking at it going. You know what, John? I I gotta have that. You know, so, um, you is that know, the one I have too. I have that one. I think. Which do one you? do I have? Which is the money? Oh, you I have the Karloff. You have I the Karloff. Okay. Yeah, oh, the Karloff. I don't know what I got. <laughs> the Tom Tyler one is great because because uh, mm -hmm. it was before he got his his arm burned, or his, like that that hand burned, and so you know he's got that kind of great weird posture that he's got. That's you cool. know where he's standing, where his hips are forward, and. Um, <clears throat> so I, I, I yeah, I, I don't know if you guys remember when you were kids, there was a, 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 a pack of old made cards and they were larger than playing cards. They were about, I don't know, five by, by three. And they had all the monsters on them, yep. either in green or purple. Yep, I remember I, those. Yeah. I've seen those too. You can see them on eBay and stuff. So one of the, my favorite memories was every time we would go over to these, these, you know, my, my mother was friends with some, one of our neighbors and, um, she'd always want to go over and visit. I didn't like their kids. So, but they did have these great cards. So I'd sit in their basement and I'd look at these cards all day long and they had the curse of the werewolf and they had all the hammer stuff and all the universal stuff too. So, so I think like universal was on one side and the hammer was on the other and one were purple, one was blue or, or green or, and it, those were fantastic. And a lot of my, um, my first, uh, uh, what inspired me to to want to create these things is was was looking at the mystery of those cards for some reason those cards carried for me a lot of um untold story you know what mm -hmm. i mean i hadn't seen a lot of those 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 uh movies yet but but the cards were so evocative and i thought i wonder you know they, they, i just created in my mind all these scenarios that where these things go and they really yeah. kind of uh, spurned my love of monsters on with these playing cards what are you drinking, Worthling? You having a cocktail there, or what, what are you having? Oh, I want a Eo. cocktail. Because water that. tastes like water. <laughs> Jeff looks like he's having a cocktail. So. <laughs> I brought my friend Johnny Walker. Damn. Johnny. <laughs> I have to go to the other room. If I were <laughs> drinking, I would have, uh, and you guys need to go to your local store and pick up a bottle of Screwball. I have that right over there. Oh, there you <laughs> go. Some of that. It's peanut butter. I can't even say I have that. Oh, it's really good. I like my booze like I like my comedy. <laughs> Screwball. <laughs> it's really good. Everyone should try Screwball. It's that's good. It's up there. It's really good in rum chata. If mm. you mix the two together, it's fantastic. Okay. You said it's made with peanut butter? Yeah. Well, it's peanut butter flavor whiskey. Really? And it sounds bizarre. Sounds terrible. Sounds terrible. Sounds but terrible. Good. My, my tattoo artist introduced it to me. Um... Um, Scott knows so me and my whiskey. Oh, and Jason, you asked me about my favorite vampire. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, there yeah. you go. Wow, that proves yeah. it. Look at that. <laughs> That's in in progress. I got about two more sessions. I'm a how pussy. I can't get take to do something like that. <laughs> I mean, seriously, how, how many times do you have to go back to get that done? Uh, I think I'm three sessions in, um, and I got two more to go. I so won't even get a flu sessions. shot. I, and yeah. you're, you know, sitting there. I mean, seriously, they're dragging me to CBS. I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> I think for I me, it's say, not so much the. It's, oh, it's go ahead. not the most pleasant experience. I mean, it's it's not. But but you earn it. I mean, it's a, you, the, the the woman that's doing this tattoo. Um, she said someone comes in and asks for like some kind of numbing cream. I just. I laugh at them and I wait for the numbing cream to wear off before I start. You have to earn, you have to earn your tattoo. So I'm sorry. She'd have to be in a bathing suit and she'd have to be, you know, I mean, there'd be plenty of, you know, peanut butter whiskey on hand for me. I, I do not have a single tattoo and it's not so much the pain part is the perfectionist in me would not allow another artist to touch my body. And then me look at it and go, 
that E is crooked. Like that letter is crooked by like a centimeter. And I'm like, yeah, that's what if you hated it. Oh, I'd be like, <clears throat> oh, even if it was like off center by a millimeter, I would notice and go nuts the rest of my life. I'd be carving. I was it talking off. to the. I was talking to the, uh, one of the members of the Kiss band, and it's Peter. Is it Peter Chris? Yeah, Peter. Chris. Uh, the little guy, right? The little kitty cat. Yep. Yeah, what's his name? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what's, Peter, what's his name? And he he um, was there was some girl that came up and, you know, and, and I was doing an episode of millennium and they were introducing psycho circus in that episode. And, uh, so I, that's, I played the lead. That's my guy. favorite show of all time. Millennium. I love millennium. I love so you, did you see the one where I was the psycho killer? Yeah, I, mean, I did. Yeah. I, okay. yep. I've seen them all. <laughs> okay. So, um, so I'm sitting around talking to him and he's a very nice, very normal guy. And uh, some woman, you know, the, the girls are just insane trying to get in. And one by one, they're letting them come in and get autographs. And she turns around and she goes, look at this. And she pulls her pants down. <laughs> and on her behind is the tattoo of the Kiss Band. And it's really, really rendered very nicely. And, you know, he's like, oh, that's, that's great. That's very flattering. She leaves. She goes, you guys are her old man. Got to look at my face <laughs> every single time. <laughs> I know. I know. That'd be awful. <laughs> That's right. That's why you got to double, you know, you got to think about those choices you make. Because some of the stuff I would have had tattooed to me when I was a kid, it'd be like, why mm-hmm. did I get a Snickers bar? It means nothing to me now. <laughs> That's the first thing the kids do now when they turn 18. They go to the tattoo parlor. It's the first Amazing thing. Amazing to me. They, yeah, they me go to too. I, uh... If my daughter does that, I'm, I, I just, I will just be so mad. Spare yourself more, pal. It's coming. Okay. Yeah. It's especially- yeah. Come on. Out in California, that's the first place she's going to go. Wait till she gets her whole neck done in Old English or something. Oh, my God. I got sleeves, Dad. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay with anything. Once you start on your face, like, I've had some (laughs) ex-girlfriends with tattoos, and not the face, though. I I can't do it. Unless they get your face on their face. That's true. Yeah, that'd be awesome. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that, oh, that would that would be really awkward sex i think yeah it would my be. stepson did his knuckles you know and i uh, I, I really didn't mean to derail this whole thing oh no it's all good <laughs> that's, that's what we do my stepson yeah. did his knuckles and i just said to him i hope this railroad job you got works out because <laughs> maybe i get a tattoo of my face on my hand so i can go yeah yes. i can just do these interviews <laughs> like this and then my first model was a that would be perfect <laughs> uh is there is there a model? Is there something you've turned down? They're like, nope, I'm not doing that. Like, get out of here. That's the dumbest idea I've ever heard. Not to call anyone out that had a dumb idea, but is there something like you refuse to do just because out of creative differences or subject matter or? There there have been things that I refuse to do more of. Um, I was telling you, I was doing these, uh, these, these Rankin Bass puppets, these animation puppets. Mm-hmm. And when I, when the guy first approached me, I, I gave him a price and I thought, you know, that, that should be what I can do that in. Cause you go from sculpture to mold and then you've got to, you know, construct the thing on top of this. And it ended up being about 10 times longer than I thought it was going to take because the eyes have to move. And well, the Rankin Bass guys can just switch out heads and switch out mouths. Yeah. I had to make a puppet that could actually articulate in one shot. Wow. And I couldn't use foam rubber because they were so small. They were from the mad, the mad monster party. And so doing the drac and the thing from the mad monster party. And I couldn't use foam because foam shrinks and it would have been too small. I had to use silicone, which is really hard to work with. And it's hard to paint. And it's so after I did this, this Frankenstein and and the, and the Boris character, I just, you know, and of course, you know, he tries to animate it and breaks it. And so has wants to send it back to me. And I just thought, you know, and I, he had, a, he wanted me to do the whole line. And I just, I, I got to stop yeah. because I'm going to go broke. You know, I, everybody else is calling me going, where's my kid? Where's my kid? And I was like, I'm still working on the puppet. So that was a <laughs> thing where it just wasn't practical for me to continue. Um, but I can't recall really getting a subject where I thought I don't want to do that simply because um, as an artist, a portrait is a portrait. I mean, yeah. you know, um, and I tend to make the noises of the character while I'm sculpting. So instead of going bah, bah, the entire time, you know, I can do uh, Barbara Streisand. I can all these singing show tunes or whatever, you know. So I, I, I find challenge in almost any, anything I do. When it comes to like your inspiration from sculpture, like uh, what other sculptors are you inspired by? Fine art included, like. Rodan's my favorite about like love him and Alexander Calder love those two guys is there anyone that you look at and you're like man that guy he really like 
who speaks to you as an artist, as you know, I, who is it? Uh, well, I'm, I'm not going to break any new ground here by saying that's Michelangelo. Okay. Um, I mean, his sculpture is just phenomenal. And, and, and the wonderful thing about it, and you talked about some of the tucky leaning, mm -hmm. uh, uh, stuff is, 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 I mean, the, the weight distribution on his kits is just, is, or his kits. <laughs> <laughs> on the Michelangelo line, they, put, they, uh, they were the kits of the day. Actually, Michelangelo, Michelangelo yes, and I were talking yeah. about kits the other day. <laughs> um, but and you know, he he was able to to see these these people and these figures and these things within a block of marble. I mean, those guys just took away. They didn't add. So they that's a, would you ever like try that? Like take a block of Sculpey and go, okay, I'm carving this thing. I've done it in foam. Okay. Because, you know, you sometimes when I'm building the larger puppets, you, you, you just have to take a scissor and go, Ch -ch 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 -ch. you have to like sculpt the foam. Um, and it's hard. I mean, I could make a mistake so easily. And then, you know, 12 years of work is ruined because right. you got the toes wrong. You know, Dude, oh, I only made four of them. Damn it. It's so, so hard to carve a Pinewood Derby car. Could you imagine? I know. Like, I, like... know I know. Well, you so, think the, the original Aurora kits, right? I mean, Ray Myers hmm. was taking material away, right? Yeah, uh, yep. yeah. The I was acetate. just going to say that. The acetate. An acetate. Yep. Although there are ways to get around it if you blow it, um, but it, mm -hmm. you know you can actually glue things back on. And I mean, they had ways to to uh, um, fix things if they screwed up. If you tap a piece of alabaster wrong, you'll crack it right in half, and there's no way to put it back mm -hmm. together. You just got to do it over again. And so, <laughs> I mean, those guys were true geniuses. I mean, those are the kind of guys that literally could sit down and just you know deftly without reference make something beautiful and i have to i have to have reference i mean i forget what a what a forearm looks like if i can't look at a forearm so no, no, yeah, you couldn't sculpt karloff in your sleep now by that now. that face i can do without reference yeah i can do okay <laughs> but i you know it takes 50 times for me to get it right is it true <laughs> is it true that you sculpted that Imhotep bust for Monsters from the Woods from a hospital bed. Is that he told me that you were in the hospital sculpting that thing? It's probably true. I don't recall <laughs> that. Um, I, I, as I mentioned, I have a bad back. So once every two years, my back goes boom and puts me on the floor, and then the ambulance has to come and take me to the hospital. And so I was, I was sculpting a Superman one six scale <clears throat> um, for an, uh, a person who I'm not going to name. You know who you are. And I told him, and he kept calling me going, you know, where's my sculpture? And I said, listen, I'm in the hospital, but don't worry. I'm working from my hospital bed. Mm -hmm. And he gave me a bunch of crap because he said, well, you know, you're on drugs for pain and I don't want you to screw up my sculpture. <laughs> I said, that's your reaction? Not, oh, wow, Jeff, no. Hey, listen, heal, man. Don't, don't worry about it. You know, I can, no, he just went, don't screw up my sculpture. And I just went, you know what? Here's your money back. Here's what I've done so far. Goodbye. And I never talked to him again. So, hmm. you know, I mean, I, I wow. there are just some things that I just can't abide. I mean, if somebody's going to work from their hospital room, give them oh. the benefit of the doubt. Yep. Oh. So that's the only hospital story. Mm. I, I, oh, okay. Because I, I know I talked to Deary and he says, <clears throat> yeah, I think he sculpted that Imhotep bust of mine. I might have, maybe well, I. He was in the hospital. And, and, yeah. yeah, I might have once I, once I, because I got some, I got to have something to do. <laughs> and my wife will tell you, I'm never without clay in my hands. I mean, we're at a dinner party and I'm like, going, oh, yeah, I love that movie, too. <laughs> you know, as I'm working. <laughs> That's too good. My 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 kids say that, you know, that I'm in this one chair, which is this, my sculpting chair. And I put it in the living room so I can watch TV. And I don't feel like I'm like, this is my office, but it's too claustrophobic with all this stuff in here for me to work for long hours. So I sit in the living room. And after a while, people just learn to ignore me because I don't move for hours at a time. So occasionally my daughter will just come and put a lampshade on my head and say, Dad, we're having people over. We're just going to, you know, just disguise you. Yeah. I said, someday you're going to come in. And there's just going to be like a resin bust of me there, you know, and you're not going to notice. Yeah. A kid of Jaeger. <laughs> oh, we used to kid, Tucky. You should have a, you should have just mm. a, a kid of you. Um, of me? A kid of no, we used to tell Johnny you should have a 
Jeff Skelton, the kid of, of, the, of John. Of John. Um, well, I actually, we to, he kept trying to get me want, to do one of me, and I, I kept saying, now that's one I won't do. That's one I have no interest <laughs> Well, there you go. There's the, <laughs> that's the There's answer. The answer. Yeah. I've been asking so Scott, people. I, I have no interest in doing it. So, Scott, a little, mm-hmm. a little uh, fun, fun tidbit here. Uh, when the G happens, mm-hmm. and Jeff, I don't know if Jeff remembers our conversation about this, but, but I, I, when, when, uh, when the Zilla happens, I'm going to have Jeff sculpt uh, my head on the body of the, of the Godzilla kid. I'm not going to offer that to anybody, but I'm going to have it in my own collection. So I'm going to have some crazy. Well, I don't know. So I don't know. I, that would be really cool. Ask, I was going to ask this yeah. earlier, Jeff. Do you ever sculpt silly things into it to see if anyone ever finds it? Like, mm. do you ever? Sculpt and Easter eggs. Me like they used Easter to put, like a little Easter egg, like you know, like stuff used they used to put in the Disney posters. Yeah, or yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that Little Mermaid well, poster, right? Or the Aladdin? Yeah, yeah. yeah it was uh, it was the Mer- Little Mermaid, I yeah, think, with the, the wieners castle in the behind. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, my brother used to carve his initials into hair and stuff like that. So nobody, so if anybody tried to recast it and say it was theirs he could say oh no my initials are right there <laughs> uh i i don't think that far ahead actually and uh so no is the answer the simple and straightforward answer to that question hey, how about a scale preference if you prefer <clears throat> or, or like busts full figures <clears throat> scale um um i like the quarter scale uh both busts and figures because there's with more real estate i can get more detail in Mm-hmm. Um, it's really, really hard, especially the older you get. And I use glasses that just now look like, you know, I look like a cyborg um, to get the those smaller one eight scale stuff. Um, and you know, when you're trying to take a brush and you're trying to smooth things out, just the blood throwing flowing through your fingers will cause your fingers to do enough that you can't get a steady, you know. So I'm, I'm like holding my fingers like this and trying to not move. So. And you don't have to do that in quarter scale. In quarter scale, I can take a brush and get all my details smooth and stuff. So quarter scale is my favorite. But, uh, you know, that's a big kit and the shelf space is a problem. So fewer and fewer people, which is why I, you know, the bust idea is great now because I get to do the portraits, which is what everybody kind of likes. Uh, But it doesn't take up a lot of shelf space. I've got like, you know, you can see how many are there on one little half shelf. And you wouldn't be able to get more than five on a shelf uh, if you did the full full fledged kit. That hammer line you're doing for Paul Gill is really nice. Uh, oh, yeah. The mummy, especially, I thought was really good. Oh, thanks, thanks. Did you get the thing with the with the uh, coffin going into the swamp there? I, I thought I thought people that might confuse people because that's well, just one little scene. See, you're gonna you're gonna. This is the ongoing joke are the movies I haven't seen. So I've never seen the Hammer Mummy movie. I've never watched. You haven't? It. No. It's so, great... so I didn't get that, but you know. Oh, it's great! It's but, great. Um, but you know, I'm familiar with the character, so when I saw it, I was like, "This sculpt is beautiful." I mean, you know, and it's it's. I guess if I said, "What have you done for Paul Gill?" That's my favorite. I would probably say that that is. Oh, cool. that's great! Oh, yeah, that's that, good. Good. That good. is really cool. So, <clears throat> thank you. I yeah, I thought the hammer characters had really not been given enough love, uh, mm-hmm. uh, as much as the universal characters, and and, and certainly the Chris Lee. Dracula, I'd done it a couple of times before and I was okay, happy, but never really happy um, with, uh, cause I got, I, I mean, you could tell it's Chris Lee, but it wasn't really Chris Lee. And I didn't see anyone. I mean, Mike Hill's a great sculptor, but he chose such a, such an extreme pose for his Chris Lee that I thought, mm-hmm. you know, it, it doesn't really look like him. And I, and I, I found out why I don't think too many people have been successful with Christopher Lee. It's cause he's freaking hard to do. And the reason he's hard to do is he looks so different in almost every photograph. You could put two photos next to, to each other of Christopher Lee, and you would think they weren't even related. They look so different, uh, depending on the lighting and his facial expression. And so I had to choose, uh, when, I, when I did this, the one for Paul, I had to choose an expression that was, I mean, because everybody wants to see the fangs, but once you do the fangs, it really changes his face once he opens his mouth and does that grimace. Mm-hmm. So I did a l- enough of it to make the monster part come through, but but I left it subtle enough that I could actually give myself a good shot at getting Chris Lee, the the, the, the portrait, uh, done. So, 
Yeah, those are that that is a fantastic line, Scott. You're right, and Jeff, those are beautiful. And hats off to Paul Gill. He's, he produces beautiful bus uh, castings. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, he actually, I've, I've got, I've got all those uh, busts. I'm I'm actually contemplating uh, bronzing them all instead of trying to paint them all. You know, just oh, that's a nice idea. Yeah, and just you know, it, it's it's a quick and easy way to fit, get a piece finished and get it on the shelf. And I think the whole series bronze might look really beautiful together. Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah, I like that. Give them some love. Yeah. Jeff, um, you've been there from the beginning. Like I, when I when I first got Terry Webb's, I think it was Garage Kit that ate my wallet. Is that the one you're holding the London After Midnight and your hands like this in the picture? Do you know what I'm talking about? Is that the one? Sure. OK, yeah. so that's my first memory of you. So you've been there like since my beginning. You've been there since the beginning of the hobby. Where do you see it going? You have Mark doing some pretty original pieces health-wise of the hobby, what's your feeling on the whole thing? Well, it certainly ebbs and flows. I mean, you know, every five, you know, five days or so, somebody will come up with a new article about how the hobby's dying. And I don't think actually the hobby's dying. I think what happens is that there are sites that are dying, that that where people get their, their fix or their, I mean, um, somebody will come into it, great guns and, and then overshoot and then they'll go bankrupt or they'll find out how hard it is and then they'll quit. And then somebody else, you know, young and hungry will come along and they'll want to do a bunch of stuff. And, and uh, sometimes it lasts. I mean, John Tucky paced himself. Um, he, he, he made good business decisions. Uh, he had very low overhead. So he was able to keep it going for 30 years. And, you know, had he survived, he'd have, he'd have gone till we were in our 70s. Um, I hope it just continues to go. I mean, shelf space is a problem. This is why I'm convincing everybody to sell all of their other models and just collect Jaegers because there's enough room in your house just for you. Pre- yeah. Hey, um, stop doing one-to-one scale heads and shit. Maybe we'd have a little more room. <laughs> well, now to the one-to-one heads, you can put on the walls. So true. Which is true. nice. True. I see that mummy up above you that you did for Brokaw um, with the pyramid base. And... oh. Let's see. Man, I remember when that came uh, out. It was just the uh there it is over there in the corner. Just the base was awesome. You know, just that, <clears> that <throat> um whole line of those. Uh, well, you only did two for Mark, I think. Now he's got the uh strange too. Now he's got the rights to that one. But well, yeah, I that did, thing I did the curse of the werewolf the for Mark too. I did the creature, the curse of the werewolf, the yeah. Frankenstein, the mummy, and uh um uh the 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 was it not House of Usher? It was um, you know the guy with the who am I thinking of? Vincent Price. Vincent Price. I can <laughs> that, never remember that actor. That is name. an amazing thank piece. You. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. So I think I've done five total for Mark. Um, and then I did a bunch of uh, half scale busts too, um, which didn't go anywhere. But I I enjoy that scale as well, the half scale busts. Um. But I think busts are kind of the way, the wave of the future. A lot of people didn't like them at first, and they weren't very popular. But uh, as shelf space gets, and you know, frankly, I can do without sculpting my seven hundredth shoe. <laughs> I mean, the faces are. Fun, you don't like sculpting doing, loafers? What's come? I mean, come on. No, I mean, you know, when I'm doing yet another shoe, and I'm going, this is, you know, all right. Now I don't like my job, or the cuffs, or you know, you guys, you know, nobody. Nobody realizes that when you do Frankenstein, you also have to sculpt Frankenstein's butt. And, you know, all these characters have anatomy and you're like, oh, I can't believe I'm doing Dracula's crotch again. Oh my God. <laughs> so hey. the busts would be good for me if I could just do those for the rest of my life. That'd be awesome. Frankenstein's butt, though, you could put anybody's butt on it and say, well, that's whose butt they had. So. And I've missed several times. I mean, I got to say, I, I really haven't nailed it every time. <laughs> what wait, do you that kind of, uh, wait hold that kind of makes me think of a question what's your biggest <clears throat> disappointing kit that you put out that you're like oh i really didn't nail it like you just said or i i could have done better like when you see because as an artist you always look at like i could fix that i know what's wrong what's the one where you're like oh man i wish i would i had another crack at that um i i've done a couple for sideshow that I thought were okay. And then they painted them. And then I see the, and then I go, God, I wish I could have it in my hands for four more hours. I could fix this thing that I did. Um, the, I did something for Terry Fitton back in the day when I was really busy and it was, 
<clears throat> Christopher Lee facing off against Van Helsing against Cushing as Van Helsing and that little those two little half moon things yep. that came together and he's got yep. the candlesticks <clears throat> and I did okay with with uh, with Lee but I really didn't do a very good job with with uh, um, Cushing as Van Helsing um, <clears throat> and I think I was just in a hurry or I didn't have enough time or whatever um, and so that was really sloppily done which is why I redid this Van Helsing up here um, <laughs> for Paul because I thought you know what I can do better than that that's you know and every time I see it I would cringe and just go I'll sell that pit so I got rid of that one <clears throat> is there anything you wish someone would ask you to do like you're sitting there saying man I'd really like to sculpt that or that would be cool or um, I would like to do a line of original work um, mm -hmm. But again, you know, it's going to be something that either I have to do just because, damn it, I'm just going to do it. Right. Or, and, and, and people have often uh, come to me and said, you know, I'd be interested in, in, in getting you to do some original work. And then it just never seems to work out because I've got ideas of doing the monsters the way I see them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but the problem is, is that it's an unknown. I mean, you don't have a franchise. And so along with, you know, I mean, every time I, uh, um, I have written movies and television in the past. And when you go to things called pitch meetings, it's really hard to get somebody to see something unless you can compare it to something else that they're familiar with. So if you're trying to break new ground, um, it's really tough. I mean, even if it's a great idea, people just won't trust whether or not it can be successful. And so I think that's what the only thing that's held me back from doing my, my own line so far is I, I, I have to make my name large enough um, and we're taking steps to try to, to do that. Um, uh, Mark and Paul and and some other people were going to be announcing something new very soon, which is a big secret now. So I can't talk about okay. it. But uh, <laughs> which hopefully will get uh, the Jaeger brand big enough that I can that original kits will start to take off because then uh, we we don't have to worry about me doing my 900th Frankenstein or whatever. We can we can actually have people collecting kits because of the artist rather than uh, the movie, which would be nice. All right, I have one more question. All right. What are, you, what are you using now that you can't find balsa foam? Heroin. No, Heroin. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I should have let you finish that question. Go ahead. Oh, but that you can't find balsa foam because I know they stopped making balsa foam. So, uh... wow. Heartbreaker. How, what kind of a heartbreaker was that? Well, I bought a huge box for Monsters of Motion, mm. but they're all. You did? Yeah, they're all. Um, Hey Jeff, I've got a big box. If you need some, I'll, yeah. I'll just sit and send it to you. Oh really? I've oh, seen a couple big boxes. I've got a big box of balsa foam. If you want it, you can. Oh have my it. God! We'll we'll do a deal for it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, that breaks my heart. I mean, I, you know, a lot of stuff I, I can't do. Um, I have found these alternative these these kind of foams that um, are safer foams mm -hmm. um, that are made in in England and some other things and and so I've been using those as kind of substitutes. But that balsa foam, I mean, especially for stone, is right. just so fantastic. Yeah. Um, and I don't know why they stopped making it. I guess it's toxic. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. What is there's it? A, I mean, come on. Like, there's a company <laughs> called Corafoam. I think they're out of Texas. Mm -hmm. Send me some samples that look really close. And I've been promising our viewers that I'm going to do a comparison to see if Don't it hold your breath. Don't yeah, really? Well, breath. tell me that there's a sculptor out there who likes to use that stuff. So if they want to test the market mm -hmm. to see if sculptors actually like it, Send me a hole. Dude, they'll send you a box. Load. All you gotta do is get a hole of them. They'll send mm -hmm. you. They sent me a box that they're like two inches thick by like, you know, whatever, eight by ten, maybe a little smaller, but good chunks. Oh, good. Okay. And different densities. And um, I just haven't got to carving on them to see, you know, you can see some of them are a little more like a floral foam that yeah, right. this probably isn't gonna go, but some of them are, you know, they have the same densities that the um balsa foam did so okay good be, and it, it appears they'll make whatever size you want you know if you buy enough of it or whatever but um yeah i mean i've tried that floral foam and it's just yeah know, that's just too porous and no, oh it's too hard to work with too. and yeah yeah i mean i end up just you know like doing the general shape and then sculpting over it with sculpey and then it when you try to cook it the foam expands and cracks your work and it's just you know <laughs> That, by the way, if you were curious, that is my least favorite part of the job is 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 repairing cracks. That is my absolute least. And the cut up, the cut up breaks your heart. 
you know, because yeah. inevitably yeah. you're going to yeah. snag it on something and it'll shatter the arm or whatever. And you got to go, God, why? <laughs> hey, and I got another quick question. So on uh, Deary's new Son of Frankenstein. <clears throat> yes, sir. You broke one of your own rules. That was my own rule. He don't have the shocker going. His fingers separated and, and they were melted together by that point. Because I remember on all your Frankenstein kits, you had those fingers together that like melted together in the bride. And oh, the, yeah, but they he, he didn't have those melted fingers in the in, in the, the son of, son of no, but it just seems like every Frankenstein kid after that still had the fingers together. The shocker, Jason's the shocker. That's not the but, shocker, uh, yeah, it's the no, other way. Well, I'm see, not well, see I don't know, so I'm glad you know. But yes, yeah, so I'm a son, teacher, I must have remained appropriate. It, it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was like, I don't hey, even know what you're talking about, actually. So. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you didn't know who strict he didn't know who strict fadden was, Jeff. Okay, you don't? Well, he does do now. Know. Oh, he does. Okay, all right. <laughs> hey, how long did it take you to sculpt this thing? Can you see? <laughs> Please tell me how That's long. That's the Maltese Falcon. Yes, it is. Where'd you get that? So you know, That's as you not know, mine though, is it? That's yes, it is. is. Yeah, it really, it sure is. So, um, I don't know if I can hold it back here. Um, is that from Tucky? That's from the Tucky kit. Yeah. So this is from my. Now it's broke. Now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. So, um, this was, you know, as you know, I converted or I had one converted to Rick from Casablanca. So that's my extra one from that, you know. Oh, okay. And um, yeah, so I got that from John, and uh, you know, um, I know we talked, and and you know, mine will never see the light of day, but um, it's uh, I still love the Bogart. I wish, I wish that line would have did better for him because I would have liked to have seen more classic Hollywood stuff. Me you know? too. That was I. I enjoyed doing that. We did 007 too. Mm -hmm. You're um, right. Yeah, and. Uh, that would have been that would have been a fun line. I wish that would have gone. Yeah, I was surprised about, about that because we could have done Marilyn Monroe. We could have done some really good stuff. Oh yeah, I did do a. Um, I did a um, for sideshow. I did a uh, Elvis Presley, um, sitting there playing the guitar from the 80, 85. What was it the eighty five uh, um, special that he did? Well, I think he was dead in eighty five, <laughs> but it's oh, you're right. <laughs> he was the same time. It was a zombie Presley. A zombie, yeah, right. <laughs> right, which is really fun because I actually played Elvis Presley once on the the Twilight Zone when I was uh, in 1985. I played Elvis Presley on a on a TV awesome. show. Jeff, be honest. Yes, sir. You killed, you killed Elvis. <laughs> actually, he saw my performance and died, which well, was you know, or maybe he is Elvis. Hey. You know, I, there, there I actually got a phone call from a tabloid saying that, um, um. His daughter's name, um, not Lisa Marie. Name, Lisa, Lisa Marie. Marie. Yep. They'd asked me, now is it true that Lisa Marie called you to say that she thinks that you're the reincarnation of her father? And and I said, um, how dare you? Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, and I, I said, that's absolutely true. Yeah. She and I, we call, yeah. I talk all the time. Well, if like, you just said you no, people get these dumbass ass. ideas. <laughs> you just said no they would have printed yes anyway so. yeah that's true. that's true i mean they don't listen <clears throat> i think my last question totally when you were talking about original takes on things did you see danny boyle's frankenstein the play from england where uh, benedict, I, benedict cumberbatch and johnny lee miller switch roles between the two either of you mark I, or i've seen photos from it i wish i had seen it so i saw it when it was at the <clears throat> theater here they were doing like a live presentation and then at the beginning of the uh the lockdown, the, I forget the name of the theater that was presenting it right now, but they did a free presentation on YouTube. It's out there. I think you can probably find it, but it is a really cool original take on the monster and the doctor. And I think everybody, it's worth everybody watching. Dan, Danny Boyle is an amazing director and he did a amazing job with that story. And it's really well done. And it really makes you feel for the creature in a way that I think some of the other things you, you don't in some of the other movies, but Get a chance wow. if you get a chance, check that out. It's really, really. I, I definitely will. I and actually, we did a leave behind where we used Cumberbatch, uh, photo from where he's got the big scar down the middle yeah. of his face. Yeah. Um. Yeah. We we used it. A leave behind is something you make when you're doing pitches at the at the networks, um, that has uh, a storyline and so it's it's like a little comic book you make of what your what your pilot's going to look like, and and you leave that with them when you're done. And so we used a photo of Benedict Cumberbatch to represent one of the characters from that from that Frankenstein. That's I think it's really really good. 
Oh, good, good. I look it forward to that. I'm gonna... Scott, <clears throat> anything else? No, I just want to say I I praise Jeff also for being one of the last AOL holdovers along with me. <laughs> when I saw that email, I was like, oh boy, here we go. Here's Scott. Now, did you get the email saying that you, you if you didn't switch over to like their special security thing by the 20th, you were going to lose your email? You know, a friend of mine got it. And I said, I think it's bullshit because I didn't get it. And you uh, did. Okay. I didn't get well, it. I called him up. I was all worried about it. And that's when my back went out as I was so worried. I was going to lose all my history <laughs> and all my, you know, yeah. mailing lists and all that kind of stuff. So was it bullshit um, then? It was a bullshit email. One of those bullshit emails. Or? I think it was an advertisement. I think it was yeah. them to try to get you to buy some sort of you know monthly security, you know, secure AOL. It's like nobody's going to steal my AOL. Who cares? <laughs> so, so I, I hope I hope it was. Otherwise, you know, I, I won't be able to talk to you guys after the twentieth. <laughs> I'll be off the grid. <laughs> oh man, AOL. AOL. Hey, this was really fun, you guys. This was awesome. Really this. this was no, great. Thanks Very for cool. coming on, both of you yeah. guys. Thanks for coming on. And we'd love and to have thanks. you both back at some point and just sh- shoot the shit again. This is fantastic. This is going to be for your Halloween show. Yeah, yes. I guess so. Great. My That's birthday cool. show actually is what. It really? Is. Yeah. Your birthday is on Halloween. Yeah. Really? Now everyone can steal my identity. I think That's they don't know. Got a, I've I've uh, said said a lot in the last two. I don't know how long I've been on this. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Mark. Did we wake you? Said is uh, how much I um, uh, am thankful to have a supporting wife in this whole crazy hobby. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, Halloween is our anniversary. So that's awesome. Uh, oh, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Congratulations. So, uh, Congratulations. So we will guys. be celebrating our. Uh, anniversary so how many years how many years did night? you make it uh it'll be 10 good for you uh actually uh you know we both uh were uh it's not our first uh for, for both of us um <laughs> it takes so we, a couple we dated, times we dated in uh we dated in high school and then we uh you know married other people and uh eventually uh you know found our way back to each other so that's great uh, one of those crazy stories that's cool. Good for you, man. Yeah. That's good for you. Uh, before we go, anything either of you want to plug? Like, just get out there, contact info, anything. Go. There's this great new line of kits called the Aurora Box Art Kit. <laughs> <laughs> this man right here does it. Now, you're below me in this. He's above you. He's above he's you. Below me here. Yeah. He's above right. you in this. <laughs> I feel like we're on the Brady Bunch or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's the story of some. Now, if I try to read off an email, I'll say it wrong. So I'm yeah, sure we'll put it up. up yeah, put it up. Um, um, Jeff, do you want us to share your email if someone's interested in commissioning something? Or, sure. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's out there anyway. Everybody knows. It's not like yeah. I can hide. So. so we'll, I just want to we'll, say thank you to all the fans for keeping me employed because, uh, you know, this is what I do now for a living. You mean those of us that have 67 of your kits? <laughs> exactly. Not those, those like the, the diehard fans. Yeah. yeah. So Scott, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to count now. So I'll uh, I'll I have the too. exact number for the next episode. Okay. Yeah. Please. We, we should we we should make it the Jaeger challenge. How many Jaeger, Jaeger challenge can you that, get? You know what? In the yeah. comments of this video, we're gonna do the Jaeger challenge. Number Who's of kits you have. That would be great. Yep. Yeah. That'd be great. Oh, good. Okay. Well, great. Good idea. <laughs> and don't lie. Don't be a dick and lie about it. Be like, be honest. So. That's true because I know how many are actually attainable. Yeah, and I've sold a few Jaeger kits. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, I've sold a few <laughs> Jaeger kits. Um, How could you? Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. I had somebody like their house, their their apartment was on fire, and the one of the things they grabbed on their way out was one of my <laughs> kids. I said, I hope you brought the children well. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Screw these kids. <laughs> Here, kids, go. Wait, on your way out. Carry this. And be careful. I think it was the box art Kong, and he he just had to grab the box art Kong. Was one of the only thing he took with him. <laughs> oh, I that was one of my last ones that I get, and I and I tease Mark all the time about being a bastard because prior to this, I had one box art kit, and that was the bride. Because oh, at oh. that point, the bride was to me the is beautiful, and I like some of the other ones, but I was like, eh. If they're not going to finish the line, it's going to bug me. You know, like Mark just said, you got to have the whole line. So when Mark comes along, he does the creature and he does the wolf man. And I start talking, I get to know Mark. And I said, so you're going to do them all? And he goes, yeah. I go, Fuck. And I'm like, so 
So now I got to start going back and getting them. And some of them I bought off eBay off private collectors. Some I went straight to Monsters of Motion. And it, it, as you know, some Monsters of Motion castings, not so great. I was going to say, how did you ever get that bride other, put together? Other, wow. but still, it's still. Mm-hmm. He didn't. He didn't get it put together. Oh, I don't have oh, any. Okay. It's another on running joke, Jeff. That um, you have actually more build kits than you I do. do. <laughs> um, even though they're not painted. So the joke is, when was the last time I built and painted something? Although I answered that. Hold on. Hold on. Oh Jeff. yeah. Here. Here we go. Hold on. The last thing I painted. Hey. Hey. Oh, that's there you nice, go. man. Well done. That's uh, nice. I that like was that. part of the amazing uh, figure modeler. Mm-hmm. They did the boot camp at Wonderfest a few years ago. Oh yeah, and they um, so this was they did, and Steve Riojas taught the class. And well, uh, you'll notice that nothing on my shelves is painted. I mean, I'll throw yeah. a, like a coat of green on it or something like that, but but I don't paint anything. I like them in sculpture form, you know, mm-hmm. so I can see the form more than anything else. But I'm never going to get these painted in my lifetime. I mean, my daughter will have to do that or something. But I've got <laughs> probably 300 in the garage and boxes. Thinking uh-huh. when I retire, I'll get to those. I have no idea if that's ever going to happen. This is a running theme too. We keep talking about it. We're never getting to our piles ever. So, um, but but yeah, we hope to have uh, each you back again. um, Separately. Good luck with this, man. Whatever. It's really a a cool venue. I think it's a a really great setup. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, You guys do a nice job. It it really does mean a lot for both of you to come on. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Enjoy your Halloween. Thank you. Anybody dressing up? Last thing. Anybody? No, I'm just, you know, Mm, I'm dressed up now. Yeah. In that so nice a, fancy. I'm shirt. a resin nerd. That's what, that's what <laughs> um, Mark had a pretty good hairstyle going earlier, so um, yeah, we'll <laughs> dressed up like that, that'd be pretty good. I uh, took care of that. That was uh, yes, you sure did. We, we tested the. <laughs> you went from like a zillion waves to like two. Okay. And uh, that's right. Yeah, you cleaned yourself up there. Yeah, he yeah, was all over the great. Place. But uh, well, happy anniversary to you and uh, and happy yeah. birthday to Jason. Oh, happy yeah. birthday, yeah. Jason. Birthday. I'll be older. Thanks again, guys. We'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye. Welcome back. That was our interview with Mark Worthling and Jeff Yeager. Scott, how do you think? Went well? I loved it. Um, Yeah, it was good. Jeff was, uh, I've known Mark for a while and Mark, you know, did a great job as I spoke at the beginning, resurrecting this box art line and the other stuff he's done. And um, some stuff they've got coming that he shared with us. It'll be fun when you guys. Uh, How about that witch kit, man? How was, like. Yeah. Wow. It's amazing. That is yeah, one of the coolest things I've seen in a long time. When you blow it up, the detail in there uh, in the photos is is crazy. So I'm sure after we show this, Mark will post photos that you can blow up and steal and all that. But fantastic. Jeff was. I'd never met Jeff really before. And Jeff was really approachable. He was a lot of fun and uh, had a lot of fun with us and some good stories in there. And, some great uh, hobby nuggets in there, to quote Steve. Yeah. And I'm going to see if I can keep my desk clean. Um, yeah, look at that. Scott, Scott uh, I think his man crush made him clean his desk. So, um, yeah, it's it was um, good. It was a good episode. It's long. Everyone, we're trying to get shorter. We really are. <laughs> Just, but you know what? At this point, I don't even care how long we go. <laughs> so, uh, we did yeah. get a, a, an email from uh, Phil. We're going to hold <laughs> it to the next episode just because, again, long. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. And we hope you enjoyed this episode. Please check out both of them. Uh, information is here if you want to contact anybody. And, again, email us at modelclubtv at gmail.com. Hey, and yeah. we want to know your favorite uh, Jeff Yeager kit and your Jeff Yeager yeah. classic uh, kit from uh, the John Tucky line. Also, if you listened at the end of that interview, it, we talked about the Yeager challenge. How many Yeager kits are in your collection? Be be honest about it. Leave it in the comments. Try and count up how many Yeager sculpts you actually have. But. Yep. <laughs> and Thank I'm you. sure you can beat Jason's number, but my number is going to be a little bigger. So I'm going to honestly, I need to go and check. I think I have more looking at his shelves. I have more than I thought I did. Um, but again, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, it's been a blast. It's Halloween. My birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, yeah, thanks, happy man. birthday. And um, happy by this Halloween. point, when this releases, I will probably hopefully be getting some cool presents. Yeah. But I that's what it. presents. 
and old. Damn. All right, we'll see you next month. Take care, guys and girls. That didn't sound right. We'll see you next month. Next episode. I'm going to edit this. Episode all 10. Episode next- 10. Wow. We should do something special for episode 10. Yes, 10. The perfect 10. Sure. Maybe we'll get Bo Derek. Nice. Is she still alive? <laughs> yeah, she still looks better than us. Thanks. Okay. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.